sellout since June, and 63,000 are here to watch Minnesota take on the Bears, who call this place the Roller Dome. Images of history. Men like George Hallis and Bud Grant. Men who built a tradition of greatness in the NFL, and they built those images from the ground up with defense. <laughs> The most ferocious image of all, Dick Butkus. Mike Ditka was another tough guy as an all-pro tight end. He didn't give an inch then, and the link between the Bears past and present doesn't now, and neither do his players. The Bears have tough guys on offense, too. Jim McMahon and Walter Payton personify the spirit of the Chicago Bears. The anchor of the Viking defense for 11 years has been Scott Studwell, and he gets lots of help. Oh. The Minnesota offense got tough last week, and Anthony Carter is their game breaker. It's another battle in an old war, the Bears and the Vikings. Tremendous rivalry and two of the hottest teams in the game, both 7-1, and one, not counting the strike. The Redskins, the Bears, and the 49ers are the divisional leaders sailing along toward the playoffs, but the wild card picture is still rather strange. New Orleans having a great year in Minnesota, the only other NFC team over the 500 mark. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick, and it's great to have you with us for the Bears and the Vikings on ESPN. Neither one of these teams has played very many big games this year, but tonight will go a long way toward determining who is the best football team in the NFC Central. As always, it's a pleasure to be working with Roy Firestone. And Roy, Mike Ditka says he would rather be outside where it's freezing than in here in the Dome. Mike, Ditka said last week the Metrodome doesn't befit football. It's more befitting of roller derby. So Mike Lynn, the Vikings general manager, had a great idea. He sent him roller skates last week. And here he is, Mike Ditka, rolling up and down the Lake Forest offices in Chicago. You know, Ditka's real Ukrainian name is Disco. Imagine the endorsement possibilities, folks. Mike Disco's roller palaces maybe in your neighborhood. Well, there are no wheels on him tonight, but he hopes that the Bear defense has got uh, rolling once in a while. You know, the Bear defense gave up more yards in one game against the Denver Broncos than they did in three playoff games back in 85. They're playing less like Grizzlies and more like Gentle Ben, I think. Uh, so much so that Dennis McKinnon on offense said, hey, I want to do something about this. I'm going to take money out of my own pocket and fund the defense. He rewarded Al Harris $200 out of his own pocket last week for making a couple of big plays. I don't know how long the Bears bounty will continue, but the schedule is very important for the Bears the rest of the way. They still have to play the 49ers, Seattle, and the Raiders. Big game here tonight, no question about it. Kind of like rollerball, and even James Kahn would be proud. Well, James Kahn is not here tonight, but another fine actor is. A star of Hill Street Blues, Ed Marinero was the runner-up for the Heisman Trophy in 1971, and until Tony Dorsett came along, the leading rusher of all time in college football. He played for the Vikings from 1972 to 75 when the team went to a pair of Super Bowls. It's a pleasure to welcome Ed Marinaro to ESPN. You know, it's nice to be here. You know, we talked about Mike Ditko wanting to be outside in the cold. You had to play outside in the cold. The man's crazy. I only <laughs> wish they had the Metrodome when I was playing in the early 70s. Unless you've played in 35 below zero weather, you don't know how miserable it is. You can't feel your hands. You can't feel your feet. Your nose runs. Uh, it, it just takes away all the offense. It, you just don't want to handle the ball. What you have is a lot of slipping and sliding and fumbles. And I would hate to see a game as important as this be decided uh, by, by turnovers like that. You know, they could have sold 100,000 seats for this game. It's been sold out since June. And the Vikings really believe they're back among the elite in the NFL. Well, when we talked to Mike Ditka last night, he really feels that the Bears and the Vikings are two of the best teams in, in, in the National Football League right now. Jerry Burns, who was an assistant for many years in Minnesota, he's at the head coach position now. He's doing a great job. I look forward to seeing Tommy Kramer have a big game. They've been fooling around with the quarterback position now for the whole season long. I think he's ready, and I think that'll be a key to any Viking victory. Weather conditions, of, cur of course, are perfect inside. A little nasty outside in Minneapolis, St. Paul. The Vikings have won the toss, and Brian Wagner, who was the punter, will handle the kickoff duties tonight. 
and Neil Gugamos averaging 23.6 yards. A kickoff return is the deep man. Third in the National Football Conference. He's got Rick Finney and Allen Rice back with him at around the 10-yard line. Big, big ball game in the NFC Central. If the Bears win it, they will take their fourth straight NFC Central title. No one has done that in the 80s. Gugamos at the two. They get up near the 20. And the Minnesota Vikings will start from there. Tommy Kramer, the starting quarterback tonight, has had multiple injury problems this year, but still has the talent that made him the league's top-rated passer a year ago. Kramer's biggest weapon is Anthony Carter, who had a huge game against Dallas. He leads the league with a 24.2-yard average at catch. And the Vikings have an emerging star on the offensive line. Left tackle Gary Zimmerman has all the tools and great technique to go with it. Anderson 46 and Nelson 20. The split backs behind Kramer. He throws on first down and has his tight end Jordan. And Jordan lost the football. The Vikings got it back. Dave Dewerson came up to make the play. And even without the injured greats, Dan Hampton and Otis Wilson, the Bear defense is tough. Richard Dent gives them their best pass rush. The linebackers are really a treat to watch. Wilbur Marshall, a consensus all-pro, simply awesome on the outside. Dave Dewerson now at free safety. Another lock for the Pro Bowl. He and Todd Bell, probably the best combo at safety in the league. Second down, six yards to go, Minnesota. And they'll only get it up to about the 25. Darren Nelson on the carry and Richard Dent on the stop. Ditka said at the beginning of the game, Mike, he didn't like playing in the Dome. I think what he was really saying, he didn't like playing Tommy Kramer in the Dome. You know, Kramer has won five of the six games played here in the Dome. He, very, he plays very, very well against the Bears here in the Dome. And that's the, the key guy, I think, right here, leadership-wise, Eddie. Third and four. They've got a full house backfield. Number 87 is Leo Lewis. go in motion. Kramer looking right and goes to Leo Lewis across to the 32-yard line. It is a first down. And the tackle, Wilbur Marshall and Singletary. The linebackers on the stop. Cheerleaders on roller skates and the scoreboard operator may need to do the same thing. I think you're going to see the Vikes throw the football a lot tonight. I think that they're going to try to exploit the fact that there's no Otis Wilson. They're not going to get the same pass rush. Uh, no Dan Hampton in there either. Uh, Kramer likes the way he's thrown the football, he told us. He's been watching the films. He's uh, making some adjustments from injuries. He's a different passer, he says, than he was in weeks past. Watch Darren Nelson. Okay. Yeah. Little play fake the fade. Oh. Lewis knocked down and all picked up by Ron Rivera who is filling in for Otis Wilson at the outside linebacker we almost had six in a hurry yeah he, that would have uh, quieted the crowd quite a bit he had nobody in front of him here it is from the end zone right here it's just a bad pass it looked like swatted it down got to keep those those linebackers hands down one thing about that Bear defense, Rivera is playing for Wilson. Al Harris is playing for Dan Hampton. They are still the number four defense in the NFL, even without those two stars. Second and ten, Minnesota. Four-man rush and Kramer with oh, the title. And oh. he dropped. Holy cow, Alfred Anderson out of the backfield, and Tommy Kramer hit him on the numbers. Boy, oh boy, we're talking 30, 40, maybe a touchdown. This is how open he was here, Eddie. Well, he was just trying to run with the ball before he caught it. Boy, he beat that coverage by a mile, too. Rivera on the outside. Anderson with only four receptions this season coming into the ball game. They do not throw to the fullback that much. And now they've got Hassan Jones in with three wide receivers. Now make it four on third and ten for Kramer. Kramer looks near side. Looked like a mix-up in the yep. pattern. Leo Lewis, the closest man to it, incomplete, and they'll have to punt it away. And the kicking game has been a concern for the Minnesota Vikings. There goes my theory about dropping the ball because of cold weather. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Greg little, Coleman not doing well in the punting department. A little sloppy early going for the Minnesota Vikings. Well, this is a big game. They're going to be a little tight. See what the Bears do. All right. McKinnon, fourth in the NFL in punt returns. He's had two touchdowns this year on punt returns. They're coming. Coleman gets a good kick away this time. McKinnon from the 20. Coverage. They got him at the 27-yard line. That's a 46-yard kick, a six-yard return. The tackle by Joey Browner, who may be the best player in the National Football League on punt coverage. This guy, what is, what is it, Kwando? What is the karate he uses? He has a, a incredible strength in his hands. Joey Browner does. They've been utilizing both, uh, obviously, in the secondary, but on special teams. He pulled Bo Jackson down with one hand from the ground a few weeks back. He may be the strongest secondary man in, in the pros. And he's very aggressive. Jim McMahon brings them out at quarterback. Walter Payton the set back. Anderson on the wing. McMahon floats one, a flag is down. Willie Galt was hit when the ball was in the air, and that will either be a hold or interference on Minnesota. And it will go against the Vikings. Jim Tunney, our referee tonight. It looked like he was throwing that ball away anyway. I don't think he uh, had anybody really open. John Harris. Illegal contact, number 30, five yards, first down. Was on the coverage along with Isaac Holt, and Holt will get the penalty. Jim McMahon starting at quarterback. He's made an excellent recovery from shoulder surgery. He's an exceptional leader. He's completed 60% of his passes this season. Four-man rush. There it is. Hit him from behind. Loose football. Vikings have it. Stafford Mays made the recovery. That's enough to get this crowd going, and that's just what the Bears didn't want to have happen, right? That's one thing I wanted to mention about the top. The Vikings defense may be better than the Bears defense. They have more sacks, more interceptions, more fumbles recovered in the last six games. They're coming up with the big plays, and this was a very big play. Well, Mays made the hit, and then he recovered the fumble. Mays playing in place of the injured Keith Millard, who was also involved in an altercation the other night in a local tavern. Big break for the Vikings. First and 10 from the 19 of the Bears. Anderson. Picked up three, close to four yards, down to the 16. Look at the, the, the disparity between the Bears and the Vikings in terms of defensive statistics. Look at 24, nine more sacks, four more interceptions, four more fumble recoveries. The total forced errors really impact the game. The Vikings have played tremendous football defensively in recent weeks, and the Bears have been disappointed. Rick Finney checks, checks into the Minnesota backfield on second and seven. Bears show blitz. Here they come. Finney on the delay. Got to the 14-yard line. And if it hadn't have been for Dave Duerson who grabbed an ankle, Finney would have had a lot more. They like this uh, Finney running back. They say really comparatively like a like a Bill Brown, uh, maybe a Dave Osborne. You see that in him? Well, Finney? he's big as a house. He is big, he's bigger than those big other guys, big. right? He's about 230, 225. Got to keep his head up, though. Keep the head up? Yeah, he didn't have his head up then. Third and four. The Vikings will go with four wideouts. Penny, the lone setback. Blitz and Kramer to Gustafson. First down and driven out of bounds at the six-yard line. But Tommy Kramer read the blitz. Reggie Phillips drove him out of bounds. This 
is just a, a, a great throw. A great throw on the move. Right there. Maybe he should have stayed on his feet, though. Could have got some more yardage. Uh, when you catch the ball, you don't know who's there. You just put your shoulder down and just go toward the goal line. First catch of the season for Jim Gustafson. First and goal, Minnesota at the Bears' six. And the Vikings' right side of the line, Greg Cook and Tim Irwin jumped off sides. Five yards, still first down. You'll see Cook and Irwin on the right side of the screen, and both got a head start. You think the noise could be a factor? It wasn't there, but it would be a factor tonight in calls and signals and offsides and things like that? Well, certainly not for the Vikings, but for the Bears, definitely. I remember playing uh, on Monday night. When you played a Monday night game, there was always a lot more noise, even in the outdoor stadiums. But people got to the stadium a little bit early and uh, preparing for the game, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> they were a little bit rowdy. Uh, you had to go by the movement of the ball, and that negates any offensive advantage. First and goal from the 11. Another blitz they throw from the end zone. Contact, no flag. Anthony Carter, the intended receiver, and back there with him was Mike Richardson. And Todd Bell also coming over from the safety spot in the end zone. But no flag down on the play. I know one thing, Mike. The Bears are scared to death of Anthony Carter. And that's all they've been talking about the last week. They think this guy is the biggest game breaker right now in the league, and they're right. He's averaging more yardage per yeah. catch than anybody else in the NFC. Well, he'd been in a slump until last week when they played Dallas, and he exploded 184 yards and two touchdowns. Kramer only one out of his last five after completing his first two passes. Another blitz. Here they come. And Richardson oh. goes up with Carter. Contact, but again, no flag. And Carter pleads his case. What do you think, Eddie? I don't really think there was much contact on. I think it was more acting than anything else for AC. Well, it's just people going for the ball, and they're allowed to do that. Watch it underneath. Right here, you just see him going for the ball. That's not illegal contact. Yeah, no, you're right. He took his eye off the ball. I mean, after all, this is football, isn't it? I thought it was roller derby. <laughs> Hassan I'm Jones confused. comes in on third and goal from the 11. Three wide receivers from Minnesota. Nelson on the delay. And Kent nailed him as he got to the 10-yard line. And as usual, we've got some pushing and shoving after the play. <laughs> Look at the helmet on Dent. Scratched that on a running back. Richard Dent was termed by Ditka Robert Dent. He tried to malign him a little bit to get him fired up by Ditka. Uh, Dent is much maligned, times for good reason. A man of his talent should be great consistently. And he hasn't been this year. Not certainly like he's been in years past. Bikes with a field goal attempt coming up. For Chuck Nelson, this should be exciting. He's missed five of his last seven. He's been mm. in a terrible slump. And Jerry Burns certainly hope he, hopes he comes out of it tonight. It will be a 27-yard attempt. He misses this one. Plow's going to be down on him. It's strange, too, because Nelson was the most accurate kicker in NCAA history at Washington. Uh -oh. He's missed six of his last eight, and that was a chip oh shot. Mm -hmm. Look at Jerry. Look at Bernsey. Ah, he didn't like that. I know that. Look at this. Perfect snap, perfect hold. He shanked it. Here's Ditka's reaction. Mm. Got a break. 10.06 to go first quarter. We are still scoreless. They're a little uplifted right now. They uh, dodged the bullet. Take over from their own 20-yard line. Peyton in motion. Anderson with his first carry. And Anderson, who has become the bellwether of the ground game, will lose at least a yard. Walter Peyton is still the starter for this Bear team, but Neil Anderson is the rising star in the Bears' backfield. The offensive line a real concern because they're banged up. Pro bowler Jay Hilgenberg playing with a harness because of a shoulder injury. Paul Blair in for the injured Jim Covert. And watch the mismatch. Left tackle Paul Blair and Chris Dolman on that same side. Blair said, matter of fact, this week, I hate playing this side. They got me in the wrong position. He may be intimidated already. Well, Dolman can do it to you. 
second and 11. Dalton was in motion, and McMahon looking that way. Now he runs. Got a good block from Moorhead. And Isaac Holt almost took him apart as he went down. That Viking defense has played well for the most part. Chris Dolman has been on fire since the strike. Ten sacks and five forced fumbles. Stafford Mays is in for the injured Keith Millard. The middle linebacker, Scott Studwell, still one of the best against the run. He's the all-time Viking leader in tackles. But the leading tackler this year is strong safety Joey Browner. He was in on 18 against Dallas. Wow. Third and five, Chicago. McMahon goes to the shotgun. Throws for Gentry. He has it at the 34-yard line. First down, Bears. Joey Browner on the stop. Well, he got a chance to isolate a little bit here. Chris Dolman and Paul Blair. Now, Dolman, no doubt about it, has to be the MVP and the league leader in uh, overstatement and ego. Trying to stop me, he says, is trying to hold on to a Tasmanian devil, trying to hold on to Tornado. That time, Paul Blair did a pretty good job in holding on to the Tornado, I think. We're going to watch this. Yeah, we're going to watch this uh, combination throughout the game. Going to be a good one. Blair and Dolman. Anderson, a little inside play, got maybe a yard as they were waiting on him. Dolman on the tackle this time from his right defensive end spot. Looks like Dolman takes the inside route here, utilizes his quickness extremely well. You have to remember, uh, he was a, a, a linebacker. He was drafted as a linebacker. Now he's playing a down lineman. He really gives him an advantage as far as speed goes. Yeah, but you'd think that he's a little mismatched in terms of size on the defensive line. 262 pounds. I don't know if it's a mismatch. It's big enough, I guess, huh? That's big enough. Second and nine, they gave Anderson a gain of a yard. Morris, the man in motion. Delay to Payton. Sweetness. Hit by Dolman again and got some help from the middle of that line. Now, Payton, of course, the major story this year, but two things about Walter Payton. His carries are down, and Neil Anderson not nearly as good a blocker for him. Well, you know, it's hard to, people always are comparing Peyton with Anderson right now, and that's really unfair. I wouldn't want to be Anderson being compared to the greatest mm -hmm. all-time runner in the NFL. I think what, what's happened is that Walter doesn't fit in the offense anymore, the way he did five years ago when he used to hand the ball 20, 30 times a game. That's not what the Bear offense is all about now. That's right. Third and long, with man to the shotgun. Anderson. A lot of people out there. Uh, He's got the first down. Gilgamos had to make the tackle as he got to the 50-yard line. First down, Chicago after Anderson went 15 yards. All right, as we take a look at Neil Anderson running very, very well, I got to ask you, do you feel Walter Payton is hurting this team offensively by playing? Why don't they have Anderson into the action more? Well, I, I, it's just hard to, 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 to think that Walter Payton could hurt any offense, even at this stage in his career. I think you're going to see a, a, the old Walter Payton flashes of that in this ballgame. He's going to definitely help the team today. Mike Ditka does nothing but praise him for his blocking abilities as a lead blocker for Anderson. I'm a big Walter Payton fan. I think everybody is. McKinnon with the catch inside the 40. They'll mark it at the 38-yard line. That's going to be a first down. Carl Lee makes the catch. My question is, what does McKinnon get in terms of money? And he's given out money to the defense. If he makes a couple of great plays, does he get some cash out of it? Don't expect a defensive coordinator to give him anything. Hey, he broke two touchdowns on punt returns this year. That's the first time a Bear has ever done that in all that history of the Bears. It's a tax write-off. <laughs> That's what the NFL's become, isn't it? First and ten, Ron Morris comes in as one of three wide receivers now that the tight end Moorhead splits out. Anderson. Got some room on the right side. Studwell with a fine tackle. Got him at the 35. So this is what the Bears wanted to do. Get a, a sustained drive here, and it took the, it's taking the crowd out of the game. Now they can call. They could go uh, call their uh, going to the shotgun. I think they were afraid to use the shotgun because of the crowd noise, but now they, they can use 
all their offensive weapons. Hey, you see Studwell, he doesn't run as well as he used to, but he's still great against the run. He's as effective against the run as he's ever been. Second and seven. Studwell's been doing it in the middle of that 4-3 for a long, long time. He's got a great name, too. Studwell. Studwell. Middle linebacker. Five-man rush. They dump it off to Pate. Stiff arm and has the first down. He just ran over John Harris. That wasn't too bad there. Didn't look like an aging veteran here, Eddie. Walter has always been real dangerous out of the backfield. Takes the ball. That's a great catch. Straight arm. He's so strong. Upper body. Look at he keeps him off with his arms. Hmm. Very effective. Harris slapping at him. Three out of three for Jim McMahon. 31 yards. And there you see the numbers on Walter Payton for the season. Another first down, Chicago. Man floats this way. Oh, beautiful. Touchdown. Touchdown, Chicago. Anderson. There is a flag down. Big break. <laughs> hey, what goes around comes around. Let's see Mike Ditka's face. <laughs> there it is. Here's the call. Illegal like motion, number 83, five yards. Willie go Pulver. Down. That pulverizes you. Uh, that's going to give the Vikings a little lift now. You know, Mike Ditka has that tough guy image, but I'll tell you one thing. I think if Walter Payton were with some other teams, he might not be playing this year. And Ditka loves Payton, and he's going to keep him on the field. I don't think he has the heart to sit him down. And I give him a lot of credit for that. Walter Payton has given an awful lot to the Bears in the football. On the draw. Oh. Let me tell you something. Walter Payton would not be in there if Mike Ditka didn't think he could do the job. Now, this is not a game of, uh, he's not doing Walter any favors. Walter Payton is very, still very effective, or he wouldn't be in there. Somebody told me, though, that he sees things now, and he just can't get there. How frustrating is that for, for an older back? Uh, <laughs> that's a hard one. I mean, I used to, when I was a young back, I'd see things that couldn't get there. <laughs> right. But, uh, I mean, that was, a, that was a great run there. He saw the outside. He made a great cut. I think he just, Walter Payne's been listening to too many people telling him how old he is. This is the 11th play of the drive. McMahon, the catch at the 12-yard line. McKinnon. The Vikings want them to overrule it. But don't misunderstand what I said. I don't think that Peyton is, is done. I'm just saying in another franchise, they might say, that's fine, we'll keep you on the roster. But we'll look ahead uh, to the future and play somebody else younger, and I don't think Ditka wants to do that. Well, I don't think, uh, I think you might see that happen on a team that's not a contending team. Yeah. When you're a contending team, you want the best people in there, even if it's, it's one game at a time. First and 10 after the McKinnon catch, they mark it at the 13. in the eye. Payton behind Anderson. Walter Payton to the eight-yard line. Tackle made that time by left end. Doug Martin, who had him around the ankles. Do you think Walter, though, Eddie, is sorry he's playing this year? Do you think he thinks he should have retired last year? Well, when you announce a retirement before uh, uh, your last season, um, it... It has to affect you emotionally throughout the whole season. I mean, he's sort of preparing himself mentally to, to retire, and you, that does strange things to your head. Uh, everything he does is for the last time. Second and four. Anderson. He took a shot from Chris Dolman, who must have been missed totally on that block. Big hit here. 56. Watch it. Coming right through the middle. Mm. Ooh. Oh. Hello. He is playing so well since the strike. He looked at a lot of films and decided, I'm not going to be Reggie White. I'm not going to be Too Tall Jones. I'm going to be Chris Dolman. Play it my style. He has been. Well, Chris Dolman's fine. Yeah. Doesn't have to be anybody else. Third and four. 
McMahon over the middle is caught, but short of a first down to the five-yard line. Ron Morris made the catch, and Scott Studwell flattened him. Fourth and about two yards. You're going to go for it. And here comes the field goal unit. Go, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I thought Dick was signaling to go for it. He's trying to confuse me up here. <laughs> Dolman reminds me a lot of Matt Blair. Do you remember Matt Blair? Sure. Played for the Vikings? I think he was 59. Yeah, I mean, he was tall. He was a linebacker. Dolman's much bigger, but uh, he looks a lot like him. As opposed to the Vikings kicking trouble, Kevin Butler has no trouble at all. He's had a great season, made 11 in a row, including two 52-yarders. And we have a stoppage in action. Can you believe that Butler, this is not to denigrate Kevin Butler, folks, but Butler has his own radio show in Chicago? I mean, they've got, they got to be 10 guys with their own radio and TV show in Chicago. They dominate the airwaves. It's unbelievable. I think Tom Thayer, an offensive lineman, has his own radio show. They must, I, I know Dick has a radio and TV show. But how much can you say about a team, folks? <laughs> it depends on the station, I guess. There's what format you say, right? They've already eaten up on this drive nearly 10 minutes off the clock. It's been 14 plays. And Butler, from 27 yards, is true. And the Chicago Bears draw first blood with 28 seconds to go in the quarter. It's 3-0. The Bears on a 23-yard field goal by Kevin Butler, who has now made 12 straight, have a 3-0 lead on the Vikings. Chicago with a two-game lead in the division, but remember with the regulars, they are both 7-1 this year. Gilgamos. Between them, the Bears and Vikings have only beaten one team with a winning record this year. Yeah, but there's only five teams in the whole conference That's with true. a winning record. That's true. Gilgamos at the goal line. Right behind the wedge. Gets out across the 20 to about the 21-yard line. And Tommy Kramer and the Vikings will start from there when we come back. 19 seconds to go in the quarter. 3-0 Chicago. A lot of McMahon imitators. There's one. Sort of trussed up. <laughs> I saw a nine-year-old McMahon impersonator in the lobby of the hotel. Today. Is that right? It was a little bunch. Had the shades. There was a real guy right down there. Made five million dollars in endorsements last year alone. Five million. Makes me sick. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing all right. <laughs> That's true. What you guys are paying me. <laughs> it's only 19 seconds to go in the first quarter because the Bears had a drive that took nine and a half minutes. And now the officials just coming back from the sideline after talking to the coaching staff of the Bears. And the Vikings will go into their huddle. Darren Nelson may start to get some carries. He is the best in the NFC, averages almost six yards a shot on the ground. into the refrigerator. That's a lot to run into, too. It's 315 pounds of William Perry out of Clemson. Or so they say, 315. On a good day. Right. Looks like a lot more than 315. Right? That's the end of the first period here at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. It's 3-0 Chicago. Back in a moment. Well, starting the second quarter down 3-0. Kramer to Nelson on a little Statue of Liberty play, and Nelson out across the 27 to the 28. Wilbur Marshall rode him down there. Good pursuit here from Wilbur Buddy Hia. That's his middle name, Buddy Hia Marshall. He's all over the field tonight. Well, Darren Nelson is so quick, and the fact that he's not real tall, I think, works to his advantage. Uh, a tall running back, he, he, he loses a lot of leverage when he has to drop that shoulder. At least that's the excuse I used. <laughs> Nelson, four carries, 10 yards so far. Having a fine year, 470 yards rushing. Says last year will be his, or next year will be his last. Uh, the age I, of 29. Don't, I don't buy that. Nelson, maybe that's why. <laughs> yeah, nailed. But they got very close to the first down. Singletary drilled him. Yeah, they got the first down. 
He is such a versatile back, Darren Nelson. You know, he got hurt earlier this year on a day off carrying a turntable for his wife. He injured his back, and Jerry Burns said, that's it, no more days off, folks. That's it. No more turntables, either. <laughs> that's a good lesson for all of us, guys. Don't carry, don't carry anything. Don't carry anything. Fake to Nelson this time. Kramer deep over the middle. Lewis wide open. Todd Bell has him at the 35. Leo Lewis with a 29-yard catch from Kramer. I don't know. These little guys, they're all over the field. Leo Lewis, Anthony Carter. How big could this guy be? 5'8"? Whoa. Trying to take his head off there. Tough. And he's talking to him, too. I can't say his name without saying little. Little Leo Lewis. It just the alliteration appeals to me. Little Leo Lewis. Had a great year in 84, tailed off since then, but is having a fine season this year. Nelson behind Fenny. And the Bears did a good job plugging that one up. Al Harris, number 90, was in on this stop, along with Steve McMichael. You see these guys getting so banged up. You talk, and you hear Darren Nelson talk about retiring at 29. You retired at 28. A lot of it was their doing, but you did get out of it because you, you had some banged uh, and bruises and hurts, right? Well, uh, I think most people, uh, they don't leave the game uh, under their own terms. And a lot of the guys today just want to be the one to call the shots. They don't want to be cut. They don't want to be uh, outright released. Uh, so I think you might, Darren Nelson might be just preparing himself. Second and nine, another blitz. Kramer reads it, gets it out to Carter. One foot down, not both. He knew it. Tommy Kramer took a big, big hit. And every time Ooh. Kramer goes down, you wonder, Roy, if he's going to get up again. Let me tell you something. Tommy Kramer, in the last five years, well, let's watch the play here. You see, he doesn't have them both in. But you see Tommy Kramer taking a big hit here. He has missed half of his games in the last five years. Wilbur Marshall with the, the big knock there. He's just not, you know, a durable football player. He's a good football player, just isn't in there very much. Four wideouts on third and nine. Another blitz. Bombs away. Intercepted by Dewarson. Intended for Carter, but Dewarson picked it off in the end zone. Threw into double coverage there. And the third interception for Tommy Kramer this year. This may have been a bit of a gamble, Eddie. He had two guys on the other outside. Dewerson making a great play. He's, of course, moved from uh, to strong safety from free safety, making the play here. Great interception. Dewerson stopping the Vikings right there. And they'll set up shop at the 20. He's an example of a guy who's responded to the drug and alcohol crisis. After four of his boyhood friends died of drug-related causes, Dave Dewerson established an organization called DAMCO, which counsels thousands of kids on drug abuse. The program is really working. And having the name and the reputation of a pro football player can really do a lot of good things. Just trying to get outside. Vikings did a great job. Isaac Hold on the corner. Wouldn't let him go, and Jesse Solomon ran him down from behind. Mike Ditka told us last night, Ed, that the biggest change on the Vikings, offensively and defensively, is team speed, particularly on the outside. You see that tonight? Yeah, you see that not only on the outside people offensively, but in the defensive backs. Uh, they come up real hard, real fast, and they can uh, uh, stop any of the runs, any wide runs. Second down and eight. Bears up 3 nothing. second quarter. Jump Peyton on the delay, almost had his head taken off. Dolman. And brought down by Chris Dolman. He is so rangy. He just stuck out that arm. Let's wait for the call here. Doug Martin appeared to have jumped offside. To see if he did jump or was drawn. Somebody moved on the bear line on the outside, too. I think maybe the officials saw that. Encroachment. Defense. Well, there I go again. <laughs> 0 for 2, but it's early. I'm trying. I'm trying. That's right. Let's watch the right-hand side of the screen. You'll see the move right there. What? There you 
you go, Doug Martin. Still second down. Well, instead of a loss of two, they'll pick up five and make it second and three. Mike Patrick, Roy Firestone, and Ed Marinero with you from the Metrodome in Minneapolis, St. Paul. The dome actually located in downtown Minneapolis. Cap Boso is in as a tight end for the Bears. Texas a and I love the way this guy runs. I think they got to get more action for Thomas Sanders. You know, he broke his neck in college. Charlie Taylor also had a broken neck in college, but this guy re recovered. Obviously, it wasn't a serious broken neck, or he wouldn't be out there. But there's always in the back of his mind that injury to contend with. And a couple of other running backs who can play on that team. Calvin Thomas, Matt Suey, who has not had a carry all year long yeah. as a running back. Boy, they have so much depth running back. Bears. The offensive line is where they've had their problems. A lot of injuries. Guys playing hurt. Paul Blair is in there for Jim Covert at the left tackle. He's going against Goldman. McMahon deep sideline, well overthrown. Browner, the closest man to it, intended for McKinnon and McMahon Ooh, took a uh -oh. shot. Yeah, he took a big hit. Come on, Jimbo. Walk it off. I hate to see him leave the game. And can I tell you something? He's also playing tonight with a very bad, I and mean, it sounds like a wimpy thing, but he's got a very upset stomach. <laughs> no, seriously, he's got, he's got the stomach flu, and he was sick as a dog last night. Are you going to try to get him another commercial? <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. Let's see the hit. Ooh, no, that's, oh, that's, no, that's something, that's something serious. Looked like Martin may have gotten it on. He didn't have an upset stomach before. He's got one. Wow. Now. Dang, big hit. Second and ten, the first incompletion of the night for McMahon. Anderson. Cut it back across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Neil Gugamos made the stop. I just in the safety. I just love the name Gugamos. You know? Gugamos sounds like the first words of your baby. You know? Gug Gugamos. What kind of name is that? I don't know. Gugamos. I don't know. I know it's Gugamos. What kind of name Italian? is it? Italian? It's got Italiano? Uh Greek? Could be. We gotta find that one. I'll get our crack staff on that. Google most. You know, the Ivy League is represented by both teams in this game. Fensick and who else? Fensick and Steve Jordan with the Brown. Right. Third and a yard for Chicago. Payton. Depending on the mark, they had to get past the 43, and the official marks it closer to the 44-yard line. Walter can still get the tough yards inside, and he is a terrific blocker when Anderson carries the ball. One other thing about Walter. Before we get the violins here for Walter, don't feel too badly for the guy. In annuities, for the rest of his life starting next year, $250,000 guaranteed a year for the rest of his life. Not a bad deal. Not that he needs the money, but just something to think about. There's another guy who would like to become uh, the first minority owner in the National Football Yeah, we League. talked about it in the preseason, the Oakland franchise, the possibility of uh, uh, ownership, uh, at least part ownership on the part of Walter Payton. And it is a first down. Yeah, when I turn 65, I get $650 a month in the NFL pension. <laughs> Whether you need it or not. It depends on your lifestyle, That's though. Right. I don't That's need right. that much. That's right. What do you really need, Eddie? <laughs> I don't know ask what, me I, I know don't what ask you me really that. need, but I mean, besides that. <laughs> Nose of the ball at the Chicago 44, first and 10. The Bears lead by three, and they've done a great job of running the clock down here in the first half and keeping the ball away from Tommy Frank. Peyton inside hand. Uh, Midfield, there's that move we have seen for so many years where he just seems to hesitate in midair. John Harris made the stop, a 14-yard gain for Walter Payton. The Vikings are hoping he'll retire at halftime. <laughs> he hasn't had a 100-yard game in two seasons, but he might be off to a good start tonight. Let me tell you, this is exactly what Walter needs to get his confidence back. I, if you can believe it, a guy who's, that, who's been that great a runner for so many years, I think he's lacking confidence. 28 yards so far, but running well in five games. Thomas Sanders checks into the Bear backfield. First and 10, Chicago. 
The Bears have worked on going with a silent count if the crowd is very loud. But right now, they don't need it. McMahon had it stuffed back in his face. Henry Thomas, the rookie out of LSU, got the hands up. Henry Thomas is the guy who beat out Tim Newton at the nose tackle. He makes up for uh, what some say might be his lack of ability with great desire, quick and nasty. I mean, as nasty as a, a rainy Whoa. night in Detroit somewhere, huh? I mean, this guy looks to penetrate it all the time, working inside with Dolman. Big, big addition defensively. He was a terrific pass rusher at LSU as a nose man. David Howard says he's the best first-year defensive player I've ever been around. His teammate. Second and ten from the Minnesota 43. Fake to Sanders. McMahon Broken pressure. Play. No good. Ball out of bounds. Good coverage by Isaac Holt, who was there to make sure he would be out of bounds. And McMahon limping again. Yeah, he looked pretty like he, like he recovered from his knee problems uh, on that play. Rolling right. You're going to see him rolling a lot tonight, I think. Try to compensate for the great pass rush of the Vikings. Here he is. This one not designed rollout, I don't think, though. Well, I Running think, for his life here. I think the timing was off a little bit because he had men out there in front of him. I think it was a naked roll. <laughs> naked a roll. naked <laughs> roll? Yeah. I just made that up, I think. Vikings were coming on a safety blitz. They had Joey Browner in the Chicago backfield. away. Oh! Touchdown, Willie Gault! That was just a great throw. Beautiful. He got some great pass blocking, and the time stood in there and unloaded. This is the fastest receiver in the game, or one of, certainly. We're talking about the tick of a clock. But this guy, as fast certainly as Ron Brown, the sprinter, Willie Galt just beats his man with speed. There you see Jim McMahon. Once upon a time, Jim McMahon said, I don't know how tough Willie is. I know how talented he is. McMahon was there to congratulate him. That baby was right on the money, and Kevin Butler is on to try the point after. He's got it. The Chicago Bears with a 9-2 record and a two-game lead in the division of taking a 10-0 lead over Minnesota. The ESPN's presentation of the National Football League is brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By your Ford and Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Yashica. They put a new focus on photography with the new 230 AF Auto Focus. And by Travelers, one of America's strongest, most experienced financial experts. Seven minutes, 40 seconds to go. First half of play from the Metrodome. And Jim McMahon hits the long touchdown pass to Willie Gall to give the Bears a 10-0 lead. Bears kicking off. Gugamo standing at the goal line. Take this as the five. Go, Does go, Gugamo. Get back to the 20-yard line. Will Johnson, a reserve linebacker, down on special teams. 80-yard drive that ate up four minutes and 13 seconds. The drive for the field goal ate up 9.38, and Galt got the last 42 from Jim McMahon. He may be a Pro Bowl receiver this year. This could be Galt's year. Certainly playing like it. Jerry Burns, he came in to a situation where he had been overlooked chance to be the head coach finally got the job and he's made believers of the Vikings and they like him and would like to win for him. Kramer floats it down the sideline. Nelson with a great try but can't hold on. Wilbur Marshall was with him stride for stride and Mike Richardson trying to come over from the corner to help out. Eddie did you hear the line Darren Nelson said about uh, Jerry Burns today? He said, Jerry Burns looks like Big Jim on Taxi. And he acts like, what was, you, you, you played for Jerry Burns. Yeah, Jerry uh, uh, was a little more um, uh, outspoken when he was an assistant coach. All I remember about Jerry Burns, he was always yelling about something, always yelling at me, and he could never remember anybody's name. He called me about six different things. I didn't know who he was talking about. Second and ten Vikings. Bears have done a great job. 
job shutting him down so far. Perry has the sack. Yeah. Hey, that's not, that, that's illegal. I don't think the karate chop landed. When you look at the fridge, what do you think about? And what do you, look, look at the guy's size. I look at a guy who doesn't say no very often. <laughs> How would you block this guy? Uh, <laughs> Just hope. Huh? I don't know. I, uh, I remember once against Dallas, I had to block two tall Jones all day long. And he ate my lunch. <laughs> He's done it to a lot of guys there. Third and 15. Kramer to the shotgun with four wideouts. Four man rush. McMichael in pursuit. Kramer will have to go out of bounds. Good the coverage. Crowd doesn't like it. Good coverage in the secondary. That's why he didn't put the ball up. There was nobody open. That was a smart play. Sometimes you just got to sit on it. Pick you don't want up. an interception down here. They have done nothing offensively. Well, they'll come out of it. Greg Coleman, who got off a fine punt first time out. I saw him in the hall out at the Vikings uh, facility the other day. Asked him if he was going to average 48. He said, no, 58 tonight. He wants to get out of that slump. First was 47. The dangerous Dennis McKinnon standing back at the 41. You don't like to line up in your own end zone as a punter. I don't like that side at all. Low kick this time. He's going to roll. But he'll get the pounce. And McKinnon did a great job of picking it up and preventing another 15 yards of roll and got five yards out of the return after a 48-yard punt from Greg Coleman. 6.39 to go on the half. 10 nothing Bears. sound it brings back memories at marinaro the way it used to be at the beautiful met can you believe i can't believe you guys played in this doesn't play. that look like fun look at osborne short short sleeve sh shirts i can't believe it and that way that's got to be 30 degrees hey below those zero. were the days bud grant used to tell us uh about the eskimos and the alaska pipeline and how they were <laughs> never cold because they we're ready mentally to be cold. Oh, as hard as I try to imagine, I was in Hawaii playing golf. I was still cold. Bears start from their own 43. McMahon, who threw a touchdown pass last time, up goes for his tight end. Moorhead over the middle. Browner and Studwell were there. You know, another interesting thing about the Metrodome, not the Metrodome, but uh, Metropolitan Met. Stadium, right. Was it Bud Grant never allowed us to have heaters on the sidelines? Oh. And we used to stand on the sidelines right next to the opposition, and they always had these big old heaters. Uh, you could see the, the, the heat coming off them, and we were like orphans on the other end of the bench. <laughs> I wanted to go AWOL a couple of times. Go to the other team, right? They were laughing at us. Wow. What a man, Bud Grant. Huh? Yeah, and that, that a made man's me more of a man. man. Yeah. He uses old space. Two tight ends in, Moorhead and Polso as they go with Peyton and toss. A flag is down. So is Peyton in the grasp of Chris Dolman and Isaac Holt. They got him three yards behind the line of scrimmage. Well, Dolman hasn't disappointed us tonight. Nope. Wonderful. But this one is against the Bears. It's funny. We were talking to Dolman uh, two days ago. He said to us with this, this kind of wide-eyed innocence, gee, fellas, do you think I'll make the Pro Bowl this year? It was so refreshing. You know, he wasn't jaded at all. I know one thing. He told me Paul Zimmerman, and Paul, if you're watching tonight, you got to remember this. Wait for Paul here. Offense, still penalty has declined. It'll be third down. Paul, Paul Zimmerman belittled him on draft day on ESPN. He said they were, he was watching the draft, and Zimmerman said, the Vikings made a terrible mistake by drafting Dolman. They should have never done it. He says from that day on, he made up his mind he was going to be a football player to show Paul Zimmerman. Well, he's already seen the depths. At linebacker, he was a bust. Right? Seemingly well, didn't have the instincts for it, but he has found a home at defensive end. That's right. 6.20 to go first half, third and 12. McMahon directing traffic, trying to run for the first down, but stepped out of bounds about four yards shy, just across midfield. Every 
time I take a look at McMahon, I'm just amazed because Dr. Job's operation on McMahon, which, which was essentially a reconstruction of his shoulder, had been performed only 10 times before. This was not a sure thing at all. It is, in fact, a miracle of sorts, a medical miracle, that he's playing this quickly this year and playing well. Like Tommy John. Yeah. Except they didn't have the, you know, the tendons transplanted, but it was a very, very serious operation. Leo Lewis standing at the 10-yard line waiting for Brian Wagner's punt. He's been up and down, averaging 41 yards a kick out of Cal State Northridge. Flag is down. Sales of beauty. And just hit into the end zone. There's a flag on the play. 49-yard punt that just reached the end zone. And now they'll talk this over, and it's a motion penalty against Chicago. Vikings may just settle for taking it at the 20. Just to pick it up on this McMahon issue is uh, he is, of course, front page news in Chicago, Jim McMahon, so much so that in the midst of the operation, listen to this, the newspapers on the kicking team holding on the receiving team will replay four times. No decisions. That's right. Two, two of the newspapers actually sent their science editors to cover Jim McMahon's operation. That's how important this man is in Chicago. And they did a good job, I might add. It was actually an interesting report. But it just shows you how important this guy is to Chicago sports. He's, I think he is now the number one sports figure in Chicago. He, he is, I think, supplanted Peyton. Anything he says. How about the country? Maybe, maybe the whole country. Wagner to punt again. This time he goes to the sideline. And this will be beyond the 20-yard line. So the Vikings got a break when the penalty. <laughs> We got a high five from Calvin Thomas. He gave the official a high five as he came up the sideline. <laughs> They're having fun out there. I love it. Only a 24-yard punt. The Vikings with pretty decent field position when we come back. That's the reserve back for the Cleveland for the Chicago Bears. I, we we got to show you what he did. He, this is the referee giving a signal to the other ref, and Cal decided, hey, I'm going to give him a high five anyway. Well, he's a friendly sort of guy. <laughs> that was great. Got to have a sense of humor. Anderson on the toss. Bears did a great job of stringing it out. It'll only get about three yards out of it. Wilbur Marshall in on the stop along with Ron Rivera. And there are the roller skates. This is, of course, in uh, reference to Mike Ditka calling a dome the uh, only decent place for a roller derby and not football. We need more shots like that. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Minnesota women are very... What, what are they? They're wholesome. Yeah, that's okay, Ed. I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to watch you tonight on what you say about Minnesota women. Okay. Second and seven. Rick Don't Fenny, forget me. 31 is it. Kramer to Nelson. Okay. And Perry oh. smelled it out and threw him down. Ah, that's taunting. You go tell him. <laughs> he is having maybe his best game of the year tonight. Fridge is all over the field, Ed. He can't help but be all over the field. I didn't want to say anything. This guy could cover Canada, folks. Uh, Look at this very nicely. He puts him down. Hello. Pulled the trigger. Yeah. This will make it third and 15. That graphic's wrong. He's 315. He took off two, huh? On game day. breaks early on and didn't uh, take advantage of. I think the team, the Vikings as a whole, are a little bit down right now. Flat. They're a little bit flat. They Maybe. need a break. I mean, it's still very early. You saw what happened uh, Denver and Chicago. And Chicago came out. It was going to be points. a blowout. Ball with the punt to McKinnon. Another low kick. That bounce is going to be 
with Viking bounce. Flag is down. McKinnon has taken two back for touchdowns, but not this one. And tackled by his own teammate. Seven-yard return after a 46-yard kick. About half of it rolled from Greg Coleman. We'll check out the penalty. It's like a motion penalty against Minnesota. Jim Tunney talking to Sean Gale. Illegal motion, offense tackle is declined. First down. Well, the Bears are satisfied with their field position. They have it at their own 41, already leading 10 to nothing with 4.09 to go here in the first half of play. The Vikings need a turnover right now. They need a drive, Ed. They haven't had that either. Well, they haven't had the best field position. First and 10 for the Bears at their 42. Bears at the 41. Notice how the crowd is out of the game right now. Yeah. Big difference. And usually, this place is definitely Sanders. Nice cutback. Studwell got him at the 48 yard line. At that time, Studwell made the tackle seven yards downfield. What do you think? Maybe time to bring in Wade Wilson? No. Uh, I, I think uh, Burns is going to stay with uh, Kramer. No way. Etch it and granted, right? Stop. Absolutely. Not going to happen tonight, right? I've been right enough times tonight. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Getting better at this. Second and three. Bears at their own 49. And to the Viking 45 goes Neil Anderson. Joey Browner made the tackle. Very good offensive selection of plays for the Bears, but I think really mixed it up. Neil Anderson moving the legs nicely here, Eddie. He's a strong runner. Just keeps on going forward, keeps spinning. And you see uh, uh, Paul Blair in there hasn't hurt him too much. The tackle's playing well tonight. The tackle's playing well. He's in playing in place of one of the best, Jimbo Covert. It's his first start, I but think. Dolman hasn't hurt them, though. I mean, he's made some plays, but hasn't really hurt the, the Bears too much in the second department. Hasn't forced a fumble yet. That's right. what he's done so That's often right. lately. But he still had a pretty good game. And McMahon will use a timeout here with 2.49 to go. I think maybe the most heart-rendering story on the Bears is the story of Jimbo Covert, who's not here tonight, Paul Blair playing in place of him. Jimbo's daughter, Jessica, was born with spinal bifida, which is a spinal column disorder that affects two out of every thousand children. The child was in intensive care for 23 days this summer. Uh, the Bears players and coaches organized a charity. Jim, his wife, Penny, and his seven-year-old son, Casey, were all there. The outlook for Jessica is very promising. It appears she'll have partial use of her legs, though she may need to wear a brace. Now, what makes the story particularly poignant, Mike and Ed, is that Jimbo Covert may be the most charitable of all the Bears, very active with the March of Dimes and the United Way and a lot of other charities in Chicago. And he said something that I thought was very moving. He said, regardless of the outcome with my daughter, I am blessed and Jessica is blessed as well. It's a nice story. Jimbo, if you're out there, our prayers are with you. You bet. It takes a lot of courage to face something like that. We remember it was going on during the preseason when we did a Bears game. And he was out there playing just as hard as he could. And it yeah. must have been very difficult to try to keep your mind on something like football. Playing through an emotional pain, not exactly. a physical pain. Yeah. He's got the physical right now. Very bad ankle was on crutches earlier this week. But he'll be back. Two-time pro bowler. 2.49 to go here in the first half. It's been all Chicago up 10-0. And there you see the yardage. Tommy Kramer has thrown for 50 yards here in the first half. The ground game's been almost non-existent for Minnesota. another deep one. McKinnon makes the catch. Lost it at the 15. It's down. It's complete. Holt and Harris on the coverage, but a 33-yard gain. Now, you watch number 39, Carl Lee, on the coverage of this play. He takes his eye off the receiver for just a moment, and McKinnon will cut inside. You watch the play. He just hesitated for just a moment, and McKinnon had cut inside and makes the catch. There, there it is right there on Carl Lee. Harris got a shoulder in there and shook it loose. Dolman trying to put the pressure on McMahon. McMahon so far, 7 out of 11, 120 yards in the first half. 
Sanders. Studwell chases him down, got him at the 13-yard line, got some help from Isaac Holt, who comes up from the corner to help out on the tackle. We've reached the 155 point in the first half. Chicago 10, Minnesota nothing. That strong safety, Joey Browner, on the sideline, taken out after the last play. He was leveled by a block he never saw. Came up limping. I think he's going to be all right. It's McKinnon and Bosa with a, a very low block. That's overkill. Mm. Boy. Got sandwiched in there and came up limping. He's okay. And he's the guy they really need in there. Second and ten. Nice fake by McMahon. And he gets out of bounds at the ten-yard line to stop the clock with a minute 49 to go. Stafford Mays was the man who was trying to put on the pressure. By the way, that block we just saw involving McKinnon and Boso that uh, knocked Browner out of the game and now he's back in the game is considered a legal block. This is why, folks, we always talk about the fact that uh, down the road, uh, medical attention for players once they get out of the game, uh, health care, very important, something that uh, we should all consider in the equation when the NFL players went out on strike, and stuff the, you don't read about in the paper the next day. Really, the trainers have uh, become so specialized and so good at their job. Before, trainers were guys who just take you up and let you play. Uh, these people are real professionals. Third and seven. McMahon dropped it off. Morris never saw it coming in and hit him on the shoulder. And if he catches the ball at six. Well, I think he was looking for McMahon to run. I think he might have been looking to block somebody. Right you're there. right. I think you're right. Here McMahon he doesn't find anybody open. He steps up into the pocket. It looks like he might be running and then tries to dump it off. Boy, that would have been a touchdown. May have cost him seven, and now Butler will try to get them three. The 27-yard attempt has already been good for 23. And Butler kicks his 13th straight field goal for the Chicago Bears. 27-yard field goal by Butler. Bears 13. Well, Mike Ditka has to be thrilled knowing when he sends Butler on the field. And he beat the Packers with a 52-yarder earlier this year with no time on the clock. You've got to think that he's just thrilled to send Butler out there and knows he's going to make it. Halftime, we've got Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, and Pete Axtell talking about this ball game and everything else that happened uh, in the NFL today. And then Roy and Ed will be here to discuss the Heisman Trophy, some of the controversy yesterday, a lot like 1971 when Ed Marinaro finished second to Pat Sullivan. I don't so want to talk about it. <laughs> Here's Joey Browner. We were talking before about Spinal Bifida as a charity. This is a man who's been very much involved in that charity. And his mother, Julia, is a wonderful, wonderful person. She not only has 11 children of her own, she adopted two handicapped children. This is a special woman who brought up the, the Browner boys and girls by herself, without a man uh, for about half his life. And uh, it's really a remarkable story. I think it's a TV movie myself. Joey turned out to be a pretty good man. Yes. He has, he has some brothers who play. Yes, Ross and Keith and Gerald, a 300-pound lineman that played in Georgia a few years back. The great Browner family. Joey had to fight for dinner, I guess. <laughs> Wasn't that Bud Grant? No. <laughs> we'll find him for you, Eddie. We'll find him. Gilgamos on the bounce from the five to use a big return, and he'll give it to him out to the 31-yard line. Maurice Douglas down on special teams after a 26-yard kickoff return. That drive went 49 yards and only 228. For the second time in the game, Butler finished off with a field goal. And our crack staff, John Wildhack and company, down in the booth have told us that Neil Gugamos is German-Bavarian derivation. I knew that. You knew that, right? Gugamos. The Vikings need to score right here. They need a field goal. They need something. Just to go in at halftime, if they went in the halftime only 10 points down. Something. Kramer has struggled in the first half. A minute 34 to go. Guns this one complete to Nelson at the 38-yard line. And now they'll go to the hurry up. Singletary on the coverage. Nelson very good coming out of the backfield. in the pocket that's it. It just collapsed 
around it. Steve McMichael and Perry got there in a hurry, and they'll spend the time out with a minute nine to go. Here's the Bears' defensive line smothering Kramer. Perry and McMichael, as you mentioned before. It's their third sack of the ball game. They're coming hard. Looks like he ran into his own man there for a moment. Number 68, that's uh, Greg Cope. Don't forget, Tommy Kramer was the number one rated quarterback in the National Football League in 1986. When he is healthy, he is a terrific performer, but you need a little bit more time than that. I think they have to start to run uh, uh, more rollout type things, it's particularly in a two-minute offense. You want to use the sidelines more. Having Kramer move out of the pocket, I, I think sitting right back there like that, it, it went... The defensive line just putting their ears back and coming. I think they're going to have to do some rollouts. We've seen McMahon with great success with the rollout tonight, getting away from that pass rush. Well, Kramer's, he's pretty mobile. He can move pretty well. First half tonight, Kramer with only 41 net yards passing. He's thrown for 55, but he's been sacked three times for a loss of 14, and he has the one interception. A lot of people critical of the Bear defense. Not playing too bad. Mm -hmm. Get to take this every minute. Third and 11 for the shotgun. Look at this. Kramer dumps the pass, and it's incomplete. The closest man to it, cornerback Bestie Jackson, number 24. And Richard Dent this time. Richard Dent with tremendous pressure on Kramer. I think he, this is a hurry. This is what is defined in the NFL as a hurry. But uh, it, it definitely did its, its job. Dent just with the big hit at the bottom there. Mm. That takes its toll. He never got a chance to set up. Greg Coleman, who's had one real good kick and two low line drives, is back to punt to Dennis McKinnon. You think they're coming here? Ten men on the line. Let's go, Horn. And Man. Coleman shanked this one. Greg just having a terrible time. 20-yard kick off the side of his foot, and the crowd doesn't like it one bit. And the, the crowd is a factor, but uh, against the Vikings this time. Boy, the kicking game has killed the Vikings. Field goals, punts. Let's take a look at this. Is this roughing it? Let me see here. Oh, no, there's no... No way. Well, actually, he was blocked into him. Another Studwell blocked him into him. Fine performance there by Mr. Coleman. Greg took uh, 102 at Florida AM. That's drama. <laughs> Tough night for the veteran, and the Bears, with 57 seconds left and two timeouts, have a shot at getting something else on the board. Remember, Butler has tremendous range as a field goal kick. Vikings come with four. Intercepted. Too high. Lee picks it up. And Lee is back to midfield. Fumbled, but it goes out of bounds. And with 48 seconds to go in the first half, the Vikings get a break. Good defensive pressure. I think that made McMahon hurry that throw. They have time. Carl Lee coming up with the play here before he was beaten by McKinney that set up the field goal. There he is, the interception, ball just overthrown. Nice block by Browner there. Look at McMahon going in there, making the tackle. Wow, he's tough. Uh, he doesn't care. He's got that linebacker mentality. Probably upset after he threw the interception. The Vikings needed a break to get them going. Let's see if this is it. Kramer drops it for Nelson. And Nelson brought down as he got to the 48-yard line. Barry Switzer said that the fastest man on any football team is the quarterback who just threw an interception. <laughs> That's it. Sometimes off the field, I might add, too. Two timeouts left for Minnesota. Here comes Dent. Kramer got away. Get out of bounds. Got a great block downfield. Leo Lewis, or Anthony Carter, threw a tremendous block downfield. Kramer getting ready to run out of bounds. Instead, he turned it up for 10 more. We were just talking about that the other day, how important it is for a wide receiver to block. And this is a perfect example of, of, of how a wide receiver can just make a play. 
Kramer's ready to go out of bounds right here, and he sees the block, and he just turns it right up the sidelines. You wouldn't think at 5'8", that little Leo, Leo Lewis could lay a big block in there. It, it's Carter it actually here. Carter. He, well, he's only about 5'9". He gets knocked down. 5'10". He gets knocked down and gets up and throws the block. Took Mike Richardson out, and with 21 seconds left, the Vikings reaching scoring territory. the 24 yard line something to consider here with 16 seconds left yep. chuck nelson the field goal kicker has missed tonight already once he's missed six out of his last eight you think jerry burns is thinking touchdown or nothing and that's what tommy kramer has seen in the first half they have been after him a lot it looks like a boxing statistic <laughs> and no three knockdown rule tonight Three hurries. I love that. Hurry. 16 seconds left. Here it comes. It's an audible. All out blitz. Kramer unloads. Just a second. Oh, boy. To the two-yard line. And out of bounds. And Tommy Kramer is down. The touchdown towels wave, but now all that joy turns to wonder. Got the wind knocked out of him. And if you've never had that happen, you don't know how what a desperate feeling it is. You think you're going to die yeah. right there. Let's see how it, it happens. You know what? Well, that was a delayed reaction. Did you see that? Looked like he got nailed in the head by Singletary. Wow. Did you see the delay on that? That is a nerve. He had had a nerve problem before right. in his shoulder in the preseason. Now, there's Kramer on the sideline. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, you're right, Ed. And Wilson had come into the ball game. And, you, and people wonder why Kramer hasn't played a lot of games. I mean, that's a great move right there. That's a great move. Touchdown. Could have been. It was Ditka's reaction. Come on, what's going on down there? Gustafson has caught two balls all year, both of them in this ball game. And let's see who will be the quarterback. Kramer came out, now it's Wilson in there with nine seconds to go in the half, and Kramer trying to shake it off and see if there's anything left in that shoulder. It changes the whole rhythm, though. You have a new quarterback in there in a crucial time, huh? Well, they have... Do you think they have time to run two plays here? They have a how many timeouts? They have one timeout left. And, of course, at the one-yard line, if they throw, no problem. And even if they run, they can, they can stop the clock one more time. They've got enough time. Depends upon what play they call, of course. They need the touchdown. Down 13 nothing, And they have three tight ends in the ballgame. Jordan 83, Hilton 82, and Mike Malarkey 86 in their goal line offense. Rice and Finney are the backs. And there's Robo Rice. Touchdown, Minnesota. Jerry Burns' confidence in Wade Wilson. Nelson for the point after. True on that one. Terrific play selection here, Ed. No one anywhere near Allen Rice. Rice with his first touchdown reception of the season. Wade Wilson with his 11th touchdown pass. 
for the second consecutive week now in games we've carried four touchdowns from guys named Rice. That's right. Well, he's not thinking of roller skates, Mr. Ditka, at this point. <laughs> Six seconds to go in the half. Alan Rice out of Baylor, a four-year man. He played and the very, noise is back in the dome. Played very well for DJ Dozier and uh, Alfred Anderson did Alan Rice in recent weeks. I just like what Tommy Kramer did right there. Coming back like that, a couple of key passes, bringing down the one-yard line. You know, the guy doesn't quit. You're right. He's a, he's an all-pro. Well, do you go back with uh, Tommy if he's healthy? You go back with Wade Wilson second. Do you go back with Tommy Kramer, working his neck a little bit here, spitting a little bit, wiping his forehead. Now you mentioned D.J. Dozier. He is not playing because of an injury, and they were very hopeful that he would, right. because coming back from the strike, he was in great form. Well, he is a, a first-class running back. I watched yeah. him in an exhibition game. Uh, that drive of 53 yards only took 42 seconds in the hurry-up offense, and Wade Wilson coming in for the injured Tommy Kramer. One play, one yard, one pass, one touchdown. Except for that last drive, Mike Ditka has had it his way here in the first half with a 13-7 lead. Bears are deep with six seconds to go. Will they kick it off deep? A little squib kick. Trying to get the first half over. Nope. And they got it back to the 37-yard line. One second to go. And we understand that the uh, shoulder injury to Tommy Kramer may have been aggravated. We'll have to wait to see in the second half if he can return to play for the Vikings. And you hate to see a guy like Kramer get hurt, as Roy had mentioned earlier. You see 28 it a lot, out of 62 games not being in there. Wow. He pays the price. He's a tough football player. Boy, I like his style. Go in there. He's got a what-the-hell attitude. You know, get on the field, go. Watch your language, Roy. Oh. One second left. What do you do here, coach? Go deep. <laughs> a typical offensive reaction. Gets it up near midfield. And that ends the first half. Our score here at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Chicago 13, Minnesota 7. We invite you to stay tuned for our halftime show. Let's go to the studio in Chris Berman. All right, Mike Patrick, thank you very much. And as they say, we now have a ball game. Somebody said that. Chicago leading the Minnesota Vikings 13 to 7. Halftime, the Bears lead the Vikings by 6, 13 to 7. We're talking to Ed Marinara, who in 1971, a lot of people don't realize, was the runner-up to the Heisman Trophy behind Pat Sullivan. Lost by about 500 points. First of all, yesterday's voting. No, what? It's bothering you. Oh, this, I don't this. want to talk about it. All right, we're still going to talk about it. Okay. Tim Brown wins the Heisman Trophy. Do you think he deserved to win the Heisman Trophy? Absolutely. Okay. Did anything bother you about the way the balloting went? Well, what bothers me is the same thing that bothered me in 1971. I feel that the, the, when the people who vote for the Heisman Trophy, they pick the player who they feel has the most pro potential. Therefore, I don't think it is truly an award that goes to the outstanding college football player. As it turned out, you had the longer pro career than Pat Sullivan. Why didn't Ed Marinaro win the Heisman outright? Was it because there, were, there was bias in the balloting? Well, I, I, I feel that... Uh, because I did play in the Ivy League and it's not recognized as a national powerhouse conference, mm -hmm. that my uh, my accomplishments were, were not really, were, were ignored. Mm -hmm. And I did everything that I could have done as a college football player. I set, I don't know how many records, and uh, it just went unnoticed, unrecognized. And, and I'm mad, even today. <laughs> People don't realize this, though, seriously, before Dorsett, this was the all-time leading rusher in college football. Not honored, by the way, by the College Football Hall of Fame, I might add, Mr. Marinaro. Does that bother you? You've been snubbed. Uh, well, I, I, I think I'm eligible, and I know my name has been on the ballots the past couple of years. No, I'm not in the, the Hall of Fame yet, and uh, they better do it soon, or, or else I'm not going to show up. Really? You don't, you don't mean that, do you? Yeah, I do, Roy. Okay. Vikings going to come back in the second half? Didn't I tell you they were going to score right before the half? See, I know what I'm talking about. I might have been away from the game for a while, 
but I know what I'm talking about. We'll find out. Bears leading 13 to 7 here at halftime from the Metrodome. We'll come back with more right after this. stats and the Bears dominate almost double in the number of yardage or number of yards rather 221 to 113 and they got three sacks of Tommy Kramer Kramer's only action came late in the first half when he drove his team downfield only to be injured and have Wade Wilson come in and throw the touchdown pass and I think Wade Wilson may be uh, throwing the football for the Vikings this half he's been warming up on the sidelines Bears first and ten. Calvin Thomas, 33, in the backfield with Peyton. Peyton found a big hole. Joey Browner has him as he got to the 23-yard line. It was all Bears in the first half. They fumbled on their opening possession, then drove for the field goal by Kevin Butler, hit it from 23 yards out, then the touchdown from McMahon, the long bomb to Willie Galt first punt came on their fourth possession and then they got another Butler field goal to take a 13 to nothing lead before McMahon threw his interception and halftime ended their final drive. Second and two after Peyton gained eight on the last carry. Peyton again. Never been afraid of the tough yards. Got it out to the 25, maybe the 26. He's got the first down. Chris Dolman on the stop. Walter Payton has 23 bear and eight NFL records. Among them, his 177th straight start is 183rd straight game in the National Football League. Nine Pro Bowls in 13 seasons, eight NFL records. What a great career. 37 yards on eight carries tonight. He has not had a 100-yard game in a long, long time. It's been 15 straight games. McMahon wants it all for Galt. He's going to get him. And there will be a flag, a flag on this one. Lee on the coverage was all over Willie Galt. And the shame of it for Carl Lee is that he had caught Galt by the time the ball got this. The ball was underthrown, but... Uh, Truly, Galt had uh, Lee beaten like a drum by about three strides. Pass interference, defense, number 39, first down. It's a 47-yard penalty on Carl Lee on the interference. Well, you can't guard Willie Galt one-on-one. -on -one. He, he needs more help. I, I think he did the only thing he could have done right there. It was a good tackle. Spotted at the Viking 29-yard line. Bears up by six, bidding for more as we start the third quarter. Anderson back in the ballgame along with Peyton. McMahon drops it off to McKinnon underneath. McKinnon to the 17-yard line, driven out of bounds by Solomon, the linebacker on the cover. McMahon may, may not have the greatest motion or the greatest stats in the world, but he's got to be one of the best leaders in the National Football League. He does everything well enough. Yeah. I love Kevin Lamb's line about him. He said, Elway is a guy you'd want your sister to marry. McMahon is a guy you'd want your sister to bet on. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is a guy that can take the team down the field. Another first down for Chicago. Jerry Burns can do is shake his head. He's just getting open all day long. Talking about Willie Galt, a much improved football player in the last two years, too. Started coming on the end of last year. Just been all over the field tonight, beating Carly. He had dropped balls. He's running better routes now. 
multi-talented athlete, Willie Galt. 19-7, Butler on for the point after. And he's perfect right down the pipe. 20 to 7, Chicago over Minnesota. Here in a rather quiet Metrodome, third quarter. ESPN's presentation of the National Football League is brought to you by the 1988 German engineered Volkswagens and your Volkswagen dealers. And by True Value Hardware, it's more than our way of doing business. And by Allstate, for home, auto, and life insurance, you're in good hands with Allstate. The Bears leading 20-7 to, to kick off. Gilgamos at the goal line. And the Bears again do a pretty good job, but Gilgamos fought his way this time out to the 28-yard line. 28-yard kickoff return, Maurice Douglas down on coverage, and Tommy Kramer on the sideline. Wade Wilson will open the second half at quarterback. Charles Wade Wilson, we call him CW, or Whiskey, if you will. Not the most elusive of quarterbacks out there, but he is a winner as well. By the way, Jim McMahon, we are now told, going to the locker room perhaps for x-rays on an injury. And we saw Harbaugh and Tom Zach warming up on the sideline for the Bears. Quarterback shuffle tonight. Nelson with Anderson in front of him. Perry got a hand on him and he goes down at the 32-yard line. Vikings in the first half terribly ineffectual on offense, as you can see. And they were hurt by the missed field goal from Chuck Nelson. And the only time they did anything, their last possession of the first half when Tommy Kramer drove them for a touchdown. And we are attempting to get a further medical update on Tommy Kramer. Went out with uh, what appeared to be a nerve problem in his neck or his shoulder near the end of the first half. Second and six. Love to establish something on the ground here. Nelson cut it back and gets it up to the 34-yard line. He'll be about four yards shy of a first down. Wilbur Marshall on the stop. Yeah, I think Minnesota's going to have to get Darren Nelson more involved in the game, um, particularly out of the backfield on, 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 in the passing game. Because you have to get him past the line of scrimmage and, and those high percentage uh, passes. Are, short uh, stuff over the middle. Short stuff. Wilson has completed just over 50% of his passes this year in relief of Tommy Kramer. Third and four. Right here, watch this. And it's Nelson, and he was very close to having first down yardage. They'll mark it the 40, and it is a first down. All right, here, Coach, Coach Marinaro, let's go. That's my old position. Doesn't pick up the big yardage, but gets enough yardage. That's all you need right here. Boom, you catch the ball, he's got the first down right there. He can't lose the first down. Wilbur Marshall held him up until Singletary got there. And Darren Nelson is 185 pounds with a couple of uh, very heavy weights in his pocket. <laughs> Minutes to go, third quarter. Wilson rifles at the corner. Beautiful. Look out. Oh, boy. Richardson. Seen a World Series championship, and they're hungry for more in another sport as the 
Vikings have come back within six. The touchdown towels are out. Don't do that to me. <laughs> Wade Wilson has sparked the Vikes. And two. AC is the spark plug. Wilson has thrown two touchdown passes. You don't think this gives you a home field advantage? Sanders at the nine. Woo! Uh-oh. Here we go. The bikes are pumped right now. Well, get a good grip where you sit. 10.39 left in the third quarter. The Chicago Bears will take over at their own 20-yard line. And very important for Jim McMahon and the Bears to get something going on offense to take the crowd back out of it, something they had done in the first half. And important to note that McMahon is, in fact, back. He's in one piece, and he's ready to go. There's another guy who's been beaten up during this career. This is just what the Bears didn't want. Jim McMahon just didn't feel well, went to the locker room. He's had the flu and has had problems uh, keeping things down. Like that one interception. Yeah. Second and eight. Drop. Ron Morris had it at the 32. Joey Browner was there, but Morris should have caught that ball. This ball just plain dropped. Ed. There's, this ball should have been caught. Browner right behind him. Actually thrown a little bit behind the receiver on this play. Oh, he knew Browner was right there. But there are so many receivers that will tell you, well, you're going to get hit anyhow. You might as well catch it while you're out there. Third and eight. Flag is down, and the Bears are stuffed shy of the first down. Jesse Solomon on the tackle will check the penalty flag for you. Right now, the Bears are just going on the movement of the ball. They can't hear McMahon. Uh, they prepared all week. Mike Dick said they prepared all week. And the penalty is against Minnesota. Big break for Chicago here. behind you and get a penalty. Costs you. Automatic first down. Mm. Jerry Burns is talking to himself. What's he saying, Eddie? Not printable. Spot the ball at the 26. First and 10 Chicago. So they maintain possession instead of having to give it up on the punt. Nothing going up the middle. Thomas was there, and now we've got more pushing and shoving. This is where the Vikings have to be careful not to get too emotional because you don't need an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty right now. They're all pumped up. They just have to maintain control. Peyton 
gained a yard on the last play. Sanders is in for Walter on this play, second and nine. Minnesota's done an excellent job on defense in the second half, except for that one touchdown, of course. You don't like that call, Ed? I don't know. He uh, he looked like he was going for the ball. He knocked that ball down. Pass interference. Defense. To the 30. First down. I'm not the only one who didn't like it. Well, you got 60,000 other folks in here who agree wholeheartedly. A bit partisan, though, Mr. Marinaro. You Let's think so? Let's watch the call. Watch the play here. Over the top. Tell from that angle. So it's the second first down by penalty in this drive, which has reached the 37. Great protection. Poso tries for the leaping grab at the 48, can't come down with it. The Vikings playing without Keith Millard. Outstanding defensive lineman, and there is Isaac Holt. You talk about Millard. This guy uh, hasn't been charged with anything, but was involved in a fracas in a bar this past weekend. So many players on this Vikings team involved with the altercations involving policemen. Next year, I think, the team picture will have to be photographed from the front and from the side. Ooh, a little cold there. Second and ten. Flag is down. Hold on. Through the hands of Neil Anderson. And it's a motion penalty against the Chicago Bears. Which will probably be declined, bringing up a third and ten. Boy, is the crowd into it oh, now. Yeah. So are the officials. Yeah. This has been an official's drive. Illegal motion, number 78, is declined, third down. Keith Van Horn, yeah. right tackle. Bears are all beat up along that offensive line. Van Horn playing with a bruised knee. Jay Hilgenberg playing with a whole shoulder harness and a bad elbow. Mark Bortz with a cracked lip. Paul Blair is in there because Jim Coburn can't play at all. Third and ten. Anderson. This is a big play. And he fell down. Shy of the first down. They'll mark it at the 42. Joey Browner covered him. Two guys fell down. McMahon on getting the ball to Anderson. He stumbled for a few moments. And then Anderson, when he got the ball, had some more running room, and he stumbled. Look at that. He's got good blockers in front of him here. And watch, he tries to cut inside. He just stumbles over his own feet. Waits at the 12-yard line for the punt of Brian Wagner. Vikings putting Carter back there, hoping for something big. Returnable kick. Look out! Got it back to the 35-yard line. Calvin Thomas made the tackle. A 17-yard return of a 41-yard kick. It's still 2014 Bears. Well, we said before that the Bears were scared to death of Anthony Carter. So far tonight, he's proven why. On this punt, he very nearly breaks it. A couple of good moves inside, and had he broken it up middle, would have gone all the way again. Just missed getting in there. That's frightening to watch from that angle. He's back there because Leo Lewis, who normally returns punts, is on the sideline with a bad leg. Vikings from their own 35. Wade Wilson, the quarterback for Tommy Crane. And around Gustafson. Oh, okay. Beautiful. Played beautifully by Ron Rivera. Stayed home and made the tackle. 
Herrera, of course, playing for Otis Wilson, who was out until perhaps the San Francisco game with a knee injury. Just smells this out beautifully. Played at Cal, kind of a rover linebacker up at Cal. Played very consistently for the Bears. They're very pleased with him so far. Ron Rivera. Wilson in the passing department. Three out of three, 67 yards, two touchdowns. Second and 12. Wilson throws complete to Porter. Same pattern that he ran on the other side that he broke for a touchdown. Dave Dorson makes the stop. Seemed like the same play anyway, but uh, he scored the touchdown on it. Uh, that's hard for me to tell here. That's Vesty Jackson and he Dave Dorson. He lost Dewison. a few yards there, though. He had the first down and he came back. Ball spotted at the 44, second and one. The three tight ends in the ball game and a full house formation. Nelson. First down. Excuse me. Rice. Mike Singletary made the stop, but not in time. Get noisy. Why do they make those mouthpieces? Why? Tell me. I don't know. Probably because they can't make them purple. You know, when I played with, with under Bud Grant, he didn't allow white shoes. Why? But it was too flashy. Yeah, just want everyone more black shoes. They look better than mud and snow anyhow. Thank you, Nelson. Wilson. Just off the fingertips of Steve George's tight end. But there is a flag down in the secondary. And the Vikings are emotionally like it's against the Bears. And it is. And of course, it's an unfortunate uh, injury Illegal situation. Illegal contact. Illegal contact. Number 27 defense. Five yards. Mike first down. I was going to say it's unfortunate that Tommy Kramer went out with an injury. But well, let's face it, folks, he wasn't playing particularly well. This gives the team a shot in the arm, Wade Wilson. He's playing very, very well. Well, unfortunately for Kramer, he was playing well just when he got injured. Right. I don't think the Vikings were playing well. Dent with some pressure. Wilson gets it off to Nelson. Stops shy of the first down at the pair of 41-yard line. And it was Wilbur Marshall and Singletary. And every time Wilson, or every time Nelson runs that short pattern, he knows that those guys are going to be there, Singletary and Marshall. There is some ferocious hitting going on right about now. In the last eight minutes, boy, I've seen some big hits. And this is where you come back with that reverse. Second and one. Good placement. 4.55 to go, third quarter. Reversed it himself. Got away from Marshall. Brought down by Bell as he got to the 35-yard line. First down, Minnesota. That was a reverse of sorts. It was. They didn't call it. He just did it. But a reverse would have worked better. And only a back as quick as Nelson could, could do that. And Bo Jackson. Todd Bell, the strong safety, came up to make the stop. Mike Ditka had a meeting with him this week, or last week, and said he just wanted him playing hard. Bell has played well since that conversation. Comes the blitz. Great protection throwing the party
Chuck Nelson to give the Vikings the lead. destroyed him in that Thanksgiving game. Eight catches, 184 yards, just beating his men with good speed, great moves, straight up, beats the blitz. Here's Wade Wilson's reaction. Yeah. Three fifty-seven to go, third quarter. The Vikings have come back. They now lead by one. gotten in the spirit here in Minnesota. Welcome to the Roller Dome. And it's rocking and rolling right now as the Vikings have come from 13 points down to take a lead over Chicago. Thomas Sanders at the four. turn out to the 32. Walker Lee Ashley, reserve linebacker, down on the tackle. And here comes Jim McMahon back out on the field. Nine out of 18, 153 yards so far. Brought him back in a comeback a couple years ago, Jim McMahon did. The miracle of McMahon. He's one of those guys, I think, that gets inside two minutes in the fourth quarter, and he simply believes there's no way they're going to lose. The one number that the Bears wanted to maintain in this game was 17. They didn't want to give up any more than 17 points to the Minnesota Vikings because they have a record of 51-0 in games they've led, or they've won by 17. They've uh, limited the other team to 17 points. That's a very important number, 17, and of course, the Vikings have 21. And the Vikings jump. And free play. Throwing for the tight end, Emory Moorhead, and overthrow. I didn't see a flag. There was not a flag down, but the Minnesota defensive line was just hanging on a Bears offensive line. And now they throw the flag. <laughs> How about that? That looked like Joe Necro. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> Jim Tunney. Comes like, over. Uh, nothing just, happened here. Uh, yeah, gee, guys. Uh, sure, there, there, there's a flag. Well, I meant to call it. That Jim Tunney came, came over to Ernie France, the head linesman. Against the Bears. And said, hey, we had uh, Hartenstein just laying on one of the uh, offensive linemen, and somebody moved. Illegal motion. Number 78 is declined. Second down. Watch Hardenstein, the former Bear, the top of your screen. Yeah, There's Van the Horn. movement by Van Horn. Hardenstein, or it wasn't Hardenstein, it was Doug Martin, who just reached over and grabbed him. And then slapped his hand. And reached. then they didn't throw a flag. He reached out and touched someone. <laughs> Second and ten, the play stands. Wyman Henderson, number 24, is in the corner for Isaac Holt. McMahon under pressure, threw it away. There wasn't a soul out there, and the Vikings want intentional grounding. They're not going to get it. David Howard. Big pressure on McMahon here. He thought there should have been grounding here. See Dolman giving chase. Howard. Could have been a late hit there, Ed. Well, he didn't mean it, though. Look at that. He's apologizing yeah. right there to the official. What about the one-step rule? What if you apologize quickly enough, they don't call it. <laughs> Third and ten. Big play for the Bears here. The Vikings have taken control of this game. Five defensive backs in from Minnesota. They'll run it. And slides shy of the first down at the 38-yard line. Covered by Joey Browner and Jesse Solomon. He got something out of nothing, though, I'll tell you. Yeah. See the way they help McMahon up that now. They really, all the players around the league really respect Jim McMahon as a, as a football player. A lot like uh, Joe Willie Namath. 
and four. They'll have to punt it away. Brian Wagner is on the field, and Anthony Carter is, again, deep to receive. Another returnable kick. He can't get to it. Picked oh. up on the bounce and paid the price. Two-yard return after a 44-yard kick. Gutsy play by Carter, but that's a good way to end your career. Rodenhausen, offensive tackle, offensive center on this play with the big hit here. Carter takes a little gamble. Uh, actually, that's no, that's actually 37. That's Maurice Douglas. Look where said it was. ESPN's presentation of the NFL will continue next Sunday. Join us for game day at 11.30 Eastern. Chris Berman, Pete Axtell, and Tom Jackson. They'll be back at 7 o'clock for NFL primetime. You get highlights of all the games in the league. And then Tom Jackson will be with us live from Denver for the Broncos and the Seahawks. Live from the Seattle. Wilson, who has a distant pass, gets it up to the 32 to Steve Jordan, a tight end. Ron Rivera made the tackle. Now, oh, Wilson's just been perfect, that's all. Wow. Seven out of seven, three touchdowns, 132 yards. He should go to Vegas. <laughs> yeah. 218 to go, third period of play. The Vikings have really turned this one around. The Denver Seattle game should match this one for about the 34. Steve McMichael on the stop. And you just run down this list of bare defensive players, and all you see, Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl, All Pro, consensus All Pro. And they're missing two great ones, too, Otis Wilson and Dan Hampton. Got Al Harris and Todd Bell back from a couple of years ago. Yeah. They were out for contract. Uh, with uh, holdouts, of course, and they're all pros, too. Al Harris, particularly last week, two block kicks. There's a lot of that holdout, holdout stuff going around with him. Wilson, Rivera has it, and brought it down on the pick Michael. You know, speaking of a contract situation, this might be worth mentioning. The uh, tightest team in the NFL, we talked about the team with the highest payroll, the 49ers. Tightest team, without a doubt, is the Vikings. Agents have told me that historically the salary scale 40% down from league average for the Minnesota Vikings. Yet the Vikes general manager Mike Lynn does make a million dollars a year. Should make mention of that as well. Technically that last play was a sack, the fourth of the game for the Bears. And it's third and eight for Wade Wilson. First down, and out of bounds at midfield. Fine job by Wade Wilson. Couldn't find anybody to throw it to and ran for 17. Wade Wilson, he could ask for a raise tonight after this performance, huh? Look at this, a little scramble outside. Looks a little bit like Elway here. Uh-huh. Directing traffic as well. Hey, you go down here, you block for me, and I'll go out of the bounds here. <laughs> okay. By the way, he threw an excellent block for him to get him about five yards. That's a pretty big quarterback there. Time winding down, third quarter. Nelson with Anderson in front. And McMichael cut him down after a gain of a yard along with Al Harris. Just to amplify the uh, contract situation for the Vikings. Viking payroll is about half the 49ers payroll, or it was a year ago. And the Raiders' backfield alone, Marcus Allen, Bo Jackson, Mark Wilson, their payroll is almost one-third the entire Minnesota Vikings payroll. They don't pay here up, up here, folks. Did you feel that in there now? Did you feel that uh, you were getting you know, nailed in the contract time? I'm talking to the wrong guy. <laughs> Wilson throws, and that one should have been caught and dropped by tight end Steve Jordan. Somehow he fit that one in there. Here's the replay. Oh, boy. I don't think Jordan believed that ball could have possibly reached him. 
Jordan, by the way, who's been an All-Pro in years past, is not having an All-Pro season. But he doesn't have to worry about the money. He's an engineer in the offseason. A fellow Ivy Leaguer. Good ground, man. The Bears have their nickel package in on defense. They made some changes now a couple of weeks ago. It's been a lot better. But Wilson hit it this time. Minnesota Vikings, they were down at one point, 31. After three quarters, you could feel the momentum change to the Minnesota Vikings. They were down at one point, 13, nothing. They now lead 21-20. And momentum, Ed, is one thing you can't measure in statistics or anything else. It just exists. It never seems to stay with the same team the entire game. And, uh, I, you know, you just sort of feel it that the Vikings were going to, something was going to happen. Yeah. And that score at the end of the first uh, half, that was exactly what they needed. Wade Wilson is exactly what they needed. He turned them all around. Well, he's playing a great ball game. Watch this catch here from Hassan Jones. This ball is zipped right, right in there. Boom. That's great concentration. Dewerson hit him just as the ball got there, but he held on. In the third quarter, it was all Vikings. 199 yards in total offense. And Wilson has completed eight out of nine for 166 yards and three touchdowns and had one drop. And the quarterback controversy is now officially on again. You're going to have a hard time convincing Wade Wilson if he doesn't deserve to start. out of this one. It's a tough little guy, Steve McMichael on the stop. Nelson came into the game leading the NFC in yards per carry average, almost six yards every time he touched the ball. Of course, Bo Jackson has an 8.1 yard average going into today's game. He doesn't count. Apparently not. I think he's in another universe. Second and six Vikings. Nelson again. Boy. Boy, Dent got there. Perry got there. McMichael got there. See, this is going to happen to Darren Nelson. He's not a big back. But that, it, it, you, you accept that part about it, but you know any moment he's going to pop one. Yep. He's so dangerous. They can't find him inside because of the size. Like a Joe Morris, that's the trend, you know, the smaller back. They found him that time. Yeah. And the Vikings will use a timeout on a critical third down call here at the 10-yard line. 13.53 to go in this ballgame. Wade Wilson will talk it over on the sideline with Jerry Burns. Back in the ESPN's presentation of the National Football League is being brought to you by the U.S. Army. Learn how to get an edge on life. Be all you can be. And by Konica's Royal Copiers. Not just tough, tough to beat. And by Mercedes, engineered like no other car in the world. Play of the game so far, third and five. Vikings at the Bear 10. Nelson right out here. Ooh. And he couldn't hold it. He saw Mike Singletary coming. Even if he catches the ball, he's not going to get the first down with Singletary in front of him. And now Chuck Nelson will come on to try a field goal he missed earlier and has missed, in fact, six of his last eight field goal attempts. Ed, you think that making the extra points may have helped? I think uh, it can give him some confidence. He needs a big dose of it right now. Not a hard field goal attempt. Right down the middle. Got to make these. 27 yards. Bob 
boom. That's it. Right in the heart. And the Vikings go up by four. 24-20. Look at Jerry's reaction here. Come on, get in. Yeah, that's it. He's bursting with emotion right now, I'll tell you. <laughs> in the stoic tradition of Bud Grant on the Minnesota sideline. We've got 13.47 left to go. If you joined us late, here's what has happened in the game. The Bears offense has stalled only 59 yards in the last five drives while the Vikings offense has taken over behind the exceptional play of Wade Wilson who came off the bench late in the second quarter to replace Tommy Kramer who had some kind of a nerve injury in his shoulder and has not returned. Well anytime you have a Jim McMahon on your team you're never out of the ball game. McMahon has done it so many times bringing the Bears from behind. Dick knows it and he loves to have him in there. They're not worried. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. Lead could change hands three or four times. The Come man's on. got that crazed look in his eyes. A couple of distinctive personalities over there, huh? I don't think they like to look at each other. They, they talk, but they don't look at each other. McMahon says, I would have loved to have played for Mike Ditka. I don't necessarily, I mean, would have liked to have played alongside of Mike Ditka. I don't necessarily like playing, you know, for him. He liked his style as a player. Gentry and Sanders are deep. Gentry. He uh -oh. can fly. And they brought him down at the 35-yard line. Carl Hilton, the reserve tight end, saved a much bigger return that still went for 32 yards. Gentry almost breaks this one. And it's almost all himself, too. He goes opposite the wedge. He cut the opposite way. Look at this. This is no surprise to anybody. He's the number two kickoff man in the National Football League, averaging 27 yards a return. They've been trying to kick it away from him all night long. Flags are down. They'll stop the play. Start number 57. Five yards. Go first down. And that's Tom Thayer, the right guard. I wonder what he's going to talk about on his radio show tomorrow. <laughs> right now, the Bears need a play. And there's the Viking, who does not look quite right in a dome. Look, you know, you need that frozen beard, you know? Look, he's wearing Bermuda shorts. <laughs> First and 15. by Martin he just stayed put right there he took on some some people and made the play Martin has really come on this year fourth in the conference in sacks 61 yards in losses wants to be something more than just uh, George Martin's brother you know George Martin of course a great player for the Giants for so many years shut out by the way in the sack department a year ago he's playing like gangbusters this year second and 13 right with him, but he's in Minnesota territory, a 20-yard game. Now, this is where it takes real courage. You know, going over the middle, watching the ball all the way inside, taking a hit, leaping. This is a real major league catch. Right there, he was saying, this could hurt, and right here, he's saying, I was right. <laughs> Looked like even a face guard, too, at the bottom of that play. Big night for him. Mike liked that catch, too. Dennis McKinnon never afraid to tell you what he's thinking. Anderson behind Thayer. Got maybe two Studwell. Put him down with a big shoulder. You gotta like Studwell. He's done it for 11 years. He just stands in the middle of that 4-3 and chases the ball. The all-time leading tackler. 
even at an advanced age, still plays very, very well. Big hit there. It's great to watch their eyes as they follow the play. Why don't you play defense? It's a good question. I'd rather not answer that right now. <laughs> Balls at the 47, second and eight. Martin got a real quick start and now gets the sack. The flag came down, but it came down very, very late. I don't know what's going on in that line for the referees. All those plays real late. The flag came down six or seven seconds after the play started. I think he threw the flag so high it looked like <laughs> The play was ruled dead. False start. Number 78, offense. The vote on Keith Van Horn saying that's why Martin Boy. came across. He is having a miserable evening tonight, Van Horn. This is about, I think, his third penalty. Maybe his fourth. He's playing out there at tackle it, it, with this Ball noise. start. Number 78, offense. Play was ruled dead. Still second down. The noise factor has to be considered. I mean, he, he, Van Horn is a, is a, a great tackle, and he, he just... I know the noise has to be affecting him. Now the officials are going into a conference. Remember Mike Ditka told us they practice the silent count, so once they get set, everybody's got to count in their own heads. 1,001, 1,002. That's murder. Let me tell you something. And there is an unsportsmanlike conduct call made against the Bears. That'll cost them 15. We made light of it at the top about how Mike Ditka hates playing in the domes because he doesn't think it befits football. The real reason he doesn't like playing in the dome is because of the noise. Let's face it, this football team can't get on track. They've had a lot of offsides tonight, a lot of false starts. That's what's killing them. And we don't know why there was an unsportsmanlike call. Mike Hartenstein is into the ball game on the Minnesota defensive line. A bear for 12 years in second and 28. McMahon complete to Morris at the 48-yard line. Terrific. 19-yard game. That was the rolling pocket that time. They used the rollout. McMahon's been taking his lumps. He's hurting again. That unsportsmanlike call, or unsportsmanlike conduct call, we understand was on the Bears bench. And there's McMahon limping once more. Hmm. Looked like he, yeah, he didn't have anybody rushing him, so I mean, must, he might have pulled up late. Third and nine. Mike Tomczak, the backup quarterback with the hat on. Blitz. And McMahon will run for it. Diving for the first down stick. Let's see where they mark it. A flag is down. We're going to have a piling on, perhaps. I don't know about that one. I don't know. Eight-yard gain for McMahon. You see the official pointing at his head. That's going to be a spearing call. We got a player down. Simon Henderson went in there for McMahon, and boy, this is a tough call to make. McMahon was diving headfirst, so was Henderson trying to stop him from getting to that sideline. This is a crucial call. Most Turning call. point call. Number 24, unnecessary roughness, first down. Well, it was tough to see from our angle. The reverse angle, we ought to be able to see it perfectly. McMahon going for the sticks. Yeah. No, I, I don't agree with that. He's he's playing football right there. He's trying to stop his forward motion. That was a that's that's a bad call. I and think. that was in slow motion. If you run it back in regular speed, it's bang bang. And speaking of and bang, he's not even hitting him with his helmet. That's with the shoulder. That's speaking with the of shoulder. bang bang, gentlemen, uh, Mr. McMahon is in serious pain at midfield. He is down. Now, here is the regular speed. Look how quickly it happens. Oh. I don't see how you can call it. Check out McMahon. That's a gut. That was a gutsy play by McMahon. Wasn't it? He's so tough. 
Mike Tomczak, who was ready, will come in. And, of course, they're doing everything they can to protect the quarterback. But once you leave the pocket, you don't get that protection. You're the same as anybody else. And they're telling us that Jim McMahon has a pulled hamstring. That's why he's limping. And he doesn't like it. But Wyman Henderson got there a split second after Jim McMahon was diving for the sticks. I was just saying he doesn't like what somebody just said to him, the Minnesota side. He was just pointing at somebody and saying something back. Boy, so Mike Tomczak, the three-year man out of Ohio State, comes into the ball game. So we have two backup quarterbacks in there now. The number's on Tomczak. His mechanics so much better than a year ago. First pass. Almost oh! intercepted. Isaac Holt cut inside of Willie Galton. Couldn't hold it. Not an auspicious beginning. That just, oh, that's devastating. An interception to end a drive right here. Nice play. That's a great defensive play. Yeah, that yeah, wasn't a real bad throw. I think the, the, the receiver has to come back for that ball a little bit. That was a great play by Isaac Holt. He was penalized earlier in the ball game on a couple of big ones. And there's McMahon. They're working on that hamstring. Sanders behind Thayer. Oh, oh, what a defensive play by David Howard. It's hard to look in his eyes. <laughs> in the USFL, this guy was known as the poor man's Lawrence Taylor. Has played very, Watch this very play well. Right look here. at this. Blocked and makes the play. Gorgeous. So this brings up third and 10 in a four-point ball game. The clock running with 10.22 left to go. They're trying to ice down that hamstring. Chicago four out of nine in third down conversions tonight. First down, Bears, as they hit Dennis Gentry for 14 yards. He stayed with this catch all the way. Bobbled it. Great concentration. Didn't lose his poise. On the run. Nice play by Tom Zach here. Rolling out. Downfield. Watch it. Stays with it. Carries it in. First and 10. Bears down 24-20. What a ball game this has been. Yes, indeed. Peyton and Anderson, the split pass. Incomplete in the end zone intended for Morris. He wanted a flag, but he won't get it. Terrific coverage. Double coverage, too, on Morris. You know, as tough as crowd noise is uh, on the Bears, I think uh, McMahon was able to handle it. Uh, so far, Tom's actually doing the same thing, but I think... Watch the coverage here, Ed. Throws it right in there to a lot of people. Well, he almost got that thing between Steve Freeman and Carl Lee. Second and 10. 9-18 left in the game. The Bears win. They win the division. The Vikings need two wins in their last four to make the playoffs. Tom Zag incomplete. Too high for Cat Boso, the tight end. And Boso was open. He was. Joey Browner, the closest man to him. And now Browner coming up slowly. Tom Zag gets the word from Mike Ditka. That ball looked like a, a, a hockey puck going off the glass. <laughs> Boy, Joey Browner's play hurt tonight. Three wide receivers in the ball game. Now make it four. The remaining back is Anderson on third and ten. Tom Zach got rid of it to Anderson. And Anderson brought down it to five. Joey Browner. And 
I think they will rule Tom Zack was in the grasp and control of a defender before he threw the ball. If they do, it goes as a minus one yard sack. That was a great athletic move by Tom Zack. Yeah. Trying to make Stafford it Stafford Mays was the guy who got it. This was a draw. This is a quarterback draw. Look at that. I think he was just down. Yeah. Kevin Butler, who has made 13 in a row, including two tonight, will try from 30 yards. 14 straight for Kevin Butler. And the Chicago Bears, with an impressive drive, have cut the lead to one with 8.51 to play. in the National Football League makes such a big deal out of backup quarterbacks. Yep. So many guys go down, and you got a Wade Wilson, who has been brilliant tonight, come in and do what he's done, and the game belongs now to Tom Zack for the Bears. And timing being such an important factor, it's got to affect the rhythm of the game when those guys come in, and yet it hasn't appeared as though it did. Especially since the starter gets most of the work during the week. But for quarterbacks, maybe it doesn't matter that much. Gugamos. Got to find a handle on it. He's in trouble now. Uh -oh. If he gets out here, he's got a line. He turned nothing into something right there. He ran a long way for three yards. No, actually, that was, that was about a 15-yard gain. He paid for it, too. Slow getting up. Holding that right thigh. Eight thirty-six to go in the ball game, and it's a one-point lead. And now the onus is really back on the Vikings to do something on offense to take something out of this. And he has problems holding on to the football. This really could have hurt. Picks the ball up, stays with it, and he rolls this way. That takes guts. Oh boy. Right down he went by the deep goal line. To the one yard line, yeah. Ran across field. Man, that was really a great effort. Gogamos is up, gets a nice hand from the Viking faithful here in the Metrodome. It's a nice drop for Jerry Burns and the Vikings. Screen out there will pick up four, maybe five yards. Had Kirk Loudermilk, the center, out in front of him. Dave Dewerson took him out of bounds. Now you said, Ed, they needed to get the ball to Nelson, and they have, and it's worked for him. If you get Nelson out there on the flanks like that, you know, he's gonna he's gonna make five or six yards. Just so quick. Gugamos has a cramp, he should return. See, Wilson has really had some success. He's played in relief with the injured Tommy Craig. Rifled that wall. What a shot. Almost a great catch. Wilbur Marshall. Gustafson really got leveled. I don't know how he got up. Wilbur's just all over the football field. He's having a great game tonight. Mm. Oh. That's when you go back to the huddle and you tell the quarterback, don't ever do that again. Except your speech isn't that clear. Right? You think you're in Cleveland, too. Third and six. Right to the light of him. And throw for the first down to the tight end, Steve Jordan. Ron Rivera made the tackle, but a big play for the Vikings. 14 yards, and they keep the drive on.
Wade Wilson in a quarter and a half has thrown for 184 yards on 10 out of 13. And we are told that uh, it is more than likely that Jim McMahon will not be back in the ballgame with that hamstring injury. Nelson. Perry got there before anybody almost took his head off and then got help. The guy at 300 and whatever can really explode off the line. that he stayed on his feet even for a moment. Didn't knock him down. Todd Bell was in there. They were bringing everybody on that one. Nelson, 11 carries, 25 yards tonight. Remember, he came in leading the NFC at 5.9 yards a carry. He's averaging 2.3 tonight against his bare defense. Wilson with a quick toss out to Jordan. Dewerson rides him down at the 44. He's going to bring up a third and about five. Very key series here in terms of the clock. If they can hold on to the football, move deliberately downfield, take 10, 12, 14 plays downfield, and score, they'll not only get the touchdown, they'll have eaten a large piece of that clock up and could make the difference. Right now, a field goal is what they need. The uh, Bears will have to score a touchdown. Six and a half minutes left. Vikings eight out of 15 on third down tonight. This is the biggest one they've had so far. Nelson, ooh! And Wilson threw it, that one behind him. Yeah, that one hurt. They hate to give this one up, Mike. And plenty of time left, too, Roy. 6.19 to go in the game. And Wilson knew he had him and missed him. He would like to have that one back. And he's looking at Darren Nelson like he might have turned the wrong way on the pattern. Coleman to punt. Bears show a 10-man punt. Dennis McKinnon, the fourth best punt returner in the NFL, is standing at his 12. Low line drive by Coleman again gets the big bounce. And McKinnon dropped at the 11-yard line. Joey Browner. They told us he's the best punt coverage man in the entire National Football League. And he's yep. not too happy about that. He doesn't like playing on that yep. special team. Wants to be paid for it. Right. Here he is going downfield. I don't blame him either. Look at that. From out of bounds. Goes downfield. Makes the play. Right there. Joey Brown, number 47. We'll come back with more after this. 6-10 to go in the ball game. Chicago down by a point. They have the football at their own 11. Mike Tomczak, the Chicago quarterback for the injured Jim McMahon. Singletary made sure he didn't get in there after Todd Bell hit him. 
and they'll try, to, also in there. they'll try to strip the ball. Jerry Burns wants to know how far away they are. And in this situation, well, here's the play. Nice job by Singletary. In this situation, you may have noticed before, quarterbacks turn around and lie to their coach. They'll tell them it's a lot shorter than it really is because they want to go for it. Third and half a yard. Quarterback no. keeper. No, sir. And now it's decision time for Jerry Burns. No, 5 to go in the game. Right. What do you do? They kicked the field goal right here. There's no doubt in your mind? No doubt in my mind. Most coaches in this situation would go for the touchdown. And Jerry Burns wants some time to think about it. He uses his second timeout. I think this is almost a macho kind of situation. Hey, guys, we got a half a yard. Are we going to tell them we can't make a half a yard on them have, or what? They have a yard to go. They tried three shots. Right. They didn't even move the ball. A field goal, and they have to score a touchdown to, to win. I agree with you. Right. Wade Wilson isn't happy with something. He's talking to a ref, and now he's talking to uh, Gustafson, Jordan. Steve Jordan he was just talking to. Now he's going to talk to Jerry, of course. That was a pretty weak effort at a quarterback sneak. Yeah. Look, they left his feet too soon or something. Yeah. Get a chance to see it again here. Here it is. Now watch. Yeah, they I mean, you stuffed. can't leap. You can't leap no, over was, the line. That offensive line is stuffed at the line. He is not going to do an imitation of Walter Payton hurdling anybody. Not from a dead stop. 5:01 left in the game. The Vikings lead the Bears by one point with a win. Tonight, Minnesota would need only one more win in their three remaining games to assure themselves of going to the playoffs. Haven't made the playoffs in five years. That's right. You have to be happy for Jerry Burns, who has really done quite a job in the last two years. They had the debacle of Les Steckel coming in here as oh, the yeah. head coach. The team really fell flat at that point. And then they brought Bud Grant back in for yep. that one year to sort of get everybody regrouped. And then they think they did the thing they should have done, brought in Jerry Burns. Has a respect to the entire team. Players love him. They love to play for him. And he gives a lot of credit to his coaching staff. He has some excellent assistants. And as a stand-up kind of guy, he says they're great coaches. He never liked me much. <laughs> well, they're going for it. Fourth and less than a yard. They're going to roll left here. Nelson. No. Well, second guess time. Todd Fell came roaring up from the strong safety position and stuffed Nelson for a loss of four. Not even any doubt about it, too. Great defensive play by Todd Bell. That's one of the places they may miss DJ Dozier the most. It looked like they had a long count there. I don't know what they were trying to do. Trying to draw, trying to draw the defense offside. Why? <laughs> to get a foot, to get it closer in, I guess. Well, the Bears' defense did its job. Now it's up to Tom's act. Great blocking. Oh! And what a throw! Somehow he got it in there to Emory Moore. Had the tight end for 23 yards. I didn't think that was ever going to come down. They had the rolling pocket moving again. They don't throw to the tight end too much. Very poised here. Tom Zach out of his own end zone. Good blocking. Look at that. Van Horn, all those guys up front. That at the other end. Emery Moorhead. Big catch here. Getting him out of trouble. That's a pretty gutsy throw, too. Yes, it was. He wasn't able to zip that ball. A lot of touch to drop it over the linebackers. There's the clock in the lower right-hand portion of your screen. The Bears have all three timeouts left. Goal. And he held on at the 40. That should be another first down. Henderson on the stop. Fine catch by Willie Galt. That was one of the criticisms of Galt. Can he go in over the middle, make the catch? 
not be so timid. He wasn't there, took a big hit. Jerry Burns, second guessing himself, I think. You still feel he should have gone for the field goal. Now it looks good. And I'm not a coach. Yeah. If Kevin Butler becomes a factor, he's the hottest kicker in the National Football League. Tomzak to Anderson. Great job by Tomzak. Kept his cool in the pocket. Got it off. Studwell made the tackle. A lot of pressure on this play. Watch the effort here from Chris Dolman. Almost getting inside. Working on Paul Blair, then cutting back inside. Beating number 63, Hilgenberg. And dealing with Walter's block. Almost getting in. You know what a big play was with Nelson losing four yards on that yep. goal line play? Because when you have to line up on your own one yard line, yeah. makes a difference. Makes a difference. Jim McMahon all taped and iced up on the sideline. Anderson. The Vikings were all over him in the backfield. Flag goes down. The first guy there was Henry Thomas and got him up around the helmet. Could be a face mask. No, it's holding against the Bears. That's a big one. That hurts. Well, if you're losing four yards, you shouldn't hold, right? Tom back to talk to Ditka. We're down to 2.36 to go in the game. Offense, 10 yards. Tom The right guard. Strongest man on the football team. Uh, face mask play there? No, he had him around the neck. That's legal. Grabbing around the neck. Second and 14, Chicago. They'll try to get some of it back right now. Tom Zek throws that one away. Nice catch by Butler. <laughs> now, this is the play of the game right here. Coming up, third and 14. What do you call here, Eddie? Uh, well, what I would try to do is get the ball underneath to uh, somebody like Walter Payton and um, let him get the first down. You've got to throw underneath because short you, stuff, high short percentage stuff, stuff. And let, but let the running back uh, do the job. Do the job, right? Be a more Thank comfortable you. call for Tom Zach, wouldn't it? Yeah, and for Ditka also. Third and 14, 210 left. Bears down by one. Pressure and a floater. Gentry couldn't hold it. That's and all right. neither could John Harris. That's all right for the Vikings. They'll take it. Gentry got his hands on it and couldn't hold it. Sort of laid that one up there a little bit. Gets pressure inside. That was Doug Martin at the last minute, making him hurry it just a bit. Well, on the replay, it didn't look like Gentry had a chance. Ball thrown behind him and high. A little bit of a floater there. They will punt on fourth and 14 with 2.04. They'll have three timeouts left to stop the clock. Great punt. Carter's driven all the way back to Don't his yard line. Carter past the 25. A big return by Carter. 19 yards after a 54-yard punt. A finish, 53 to go. ESPN, the Travelers Corporation, will present the Travelers NFL Man of the Year Award to the player whose on-field performance is complimented by his community involvement. This year's nominees from the Minnesota Vikings, Darren Nelson, and from the Chicago Bears, Dave Dewerson. Stay tuned for Sports Center immediately following our telecast here from the Metrodome. Renamed the Roller Dome. It's rolling tonight. Rocking and rolling. There you see Chicago with all three timeouts. They'll use them presumably to stop the clock.
after Minnesota running plays, the Vikings would love to get one first down and wrap it up. Nelson and Anderson, the running backs in the eye. Nelson. Now, Rivera in on the stop. We've got a couple, and they'll use a timeout. And this is why this game is so big. As you take a look at the standings, Chicago on top with a two-game lead. Minnesota could cut that margin to one. It is a two-way race. Chicago, of course, with a win, would wrap up the Central Division for the fourth time in the 80s. No other team has won its division four times in this decade. The other part of that equation is the rest of the schedule for the Bears. They still have to play the 49ers, the Seahawks, and the Raiders. Conversely, the Vikings, while no game is, is, is a sure thing, have the lighter schedule. I don't know. The Packers looked pretty tough today. Didn't they? But look at it. Green it's Bay, Detroit, defense. Washington at home. It's a lot easier than what they're having to do. The yeah, Bears. That's kind of scary, though, when you're playing teams that have really nothing to lose. Right. You saw that in Seattle when they played the, uh, the, Raiders. the Raiders. Yep. Hey, what would you think of Bo Jackson's performance on that Monday night game? Is that unbelievable? I found it somewhat depressing. Um, <laughs> Why? Because I always used to dream about being in the clear, seeing no one in front of me, and knowing that I, I was going to score. And that's exactly how he feels. He's awesome. Second and seven, Minnesota. The but Bears can stop that. the clock tw two more times. William Perry stepping on his hand. <laughs> wow. You know, in the midst of this euphoria, we might mention this. The, the Vikings lead the league in a very embarrassing category. Most players charged with driving while intoxicated. In the last 15 months, seven Viking players have been involved in, in an alcohol abuse charge. And only one, Isaac Holt, was jailed and fined. In my opinion here, I the league punishes drug abusers, yet it seems to operate on a double standard regarding alcohol abuse. To me, this isn't only hypocritical, it's unconscionable. Drunk drivers pose a greater threat to society than drug abusers. Certainly drug abuse in any form is despicable, but there is that double standard that's operated by the NFL and all of sports. I think they have to address the whole of the drug problem. That's alcohol and illegal drug abuse. Of course, it all boils down to individuals and how they choose to live their lives. Unfortunately, football players or any athletes are, are always under a magnifying glass. And uh, you hear about them in defense of uh, these people. There's no defending it. Third and four. Bears have to stop them. And maybe didn't. Depends on the mark as Anderson hurled his body forward to the 39. He needed to go just past the yard stripe to get the first down. And the officials will stop the clock to measure this one. I don't think they got it. I think they're about two or three inches short. The stick is marked just past the yard mark. The Bears would uh, have one timeout left. They could use it right after the measurement or hold it. And it is short, less than the length of a football. Now this is an extremely crucial play. Possession play, the key play of this football game. And the pressure is on Greg Coleman, whose last three or four have been low-line drives that only went about 25 yards in the air. You send, you send the team in there to block this now? Or do you, do you run the risk of a, of a penalty here? Blocking? I don't. I think that uh, there's plenty of time left for the Bears. Again, they only need a field goal here. I send them all. I think it's that crucial right now. McKinnon, remember, has two punt returns for touchdowns this year. 94 and 60. Here they come. Another low line drive kick taken by one of the up at the 30. They'll get it back to the 38 yard line. And that's Dewerson. And the crowd does not like the performance of the Minnesota kicking game. He 
neither does Mr. Coleman. No, Greg's not happy about it at all. He's a much better kicker than that. And the there Vikings didn't take any time wow. off that clock. Mm. They kicked it with 27 seconds left on the 32nd clock. Bears have one timeout. It's a big one. Last chance for Tomsak. Anderson, big hole. Look out. Jesse Solomon ran him out of bounds at the 42-yard line. And it took only nine seconds off the clock. And he stopped the clock. 20-yard gain for the second-year man out of the University of Florida. Great oh, bounce. Oh. That's a big play right there. Eluding Joey Browner. Fabulous. Great, great effort. Kevin Butler waits on the sideline. He beat the Packers earlier this year with no time on the clock. Well, Tom Zach incomplete for McKinnon, Wyman, Henderson on the cover. And McKinnon was open. And did get really knows upset it. at his quarterback. He knows it. Oh, they've got to get about 10, 15 yards upfield. Here's Ditka's react. Come on! Mike, let's go! Second and 10. From the Viking 41. Four wide receivers. Anderson, the lone back. Gentry. Gets it down to the 38-yard line. You see, I think that's a mistake for Dick to, to, to do that to Tom Zach in this situation. Why? Because, I mean, the guy, it, it, the last thing he needs is to, to uh, see his coach screaming at him because he might have thrown the ball in the wrong place. Gentry, first down, look out! tackle set sail and nobody could knock him down Gentry came into this game with five catches and no touchdowns all year his biggest play of the season and Jim McMahon with ice on his arm and his leg is now the head cheerleader for Chicago What an effort. Tom Zach's stock sure went up. Man. That was just a great play. Butler for the point after to make it a six-point game. A great game, too. And it is. Watch Gentry. He gets the credit on this one. A great individual effort. He's a converted running back, and he does a lot of this running on his own here. Just eluding one defender there. Great piece of running here. Breaking another tackle there, going on in. Beautiful. test for the Minnesota Vikings. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the express written consent, the National Football League is prohibited. So now Wade Wilson will have to perform another miracle. With one timeout, they got to get six points in 40 seconds. Of course, you'd have to think, the way Wilson has played so far tonight, if anybody's going to do it, he could. Well, they need a good return right here. They won't get an opportunity, I don't think, to get a ball where they can set up. This will have to be a broken kind of play, the ball bounding around. Well, they're putting Darren Nelson deep. 
Sports Center follows this telecast. Nelson, who averages 22.7 on kickoff returns, will have a shot at this one if the Bears kick it deep to him. This reminds me of the scenario a few years back when Ahmad Rashad came up on that last play of the game, scored that touchdown on the bomb from, I think it was Tarkin. It may have been, uh, it may have been Tommy Kramer. I think it was Kramer. It was Kramer. It reminds me of the same scenario. Nelson. Position, though, with 33 seconds left. A field goal does them no good. Oh, what a game. Three wide receivers and the shotgun. Dent with the pressure, and they got there. Dent paused it, and Al Harris got the sack along with Vic Michael. That will temporarily stop the clock. And Al Harris might get another 100 bucks from McKinnon. Fifth sack of the game. And this Minnesota uses its last timeout. That's Dent really forcing the play. And Harris cleaning up. Mm. Well, the Vikings are in a tough position now with 28 seconds left, no timeouts. Seems stranger things happen. Clock will stop on first downs to move the chains, but that's all. What about trickery stuff? Hook and ladder plays, you know? Yeah. Of course, it might be as good as anything at this point. I think they're just going to have to use the sidelines here. Get as much as they can. We've got 62 yards to go in 28 seconds. Wilson has performed brilliantly coming in after Kramer was injured. have broken a lot of hearts in the fourth quarter over the years, especially with McMahon in there. This time it was Tom Zack. Viking secondary. That's Joey Browner, of course, representing the whole of the Felix. Bears continue to come with a four-man rush. That's how they got to him last time. Wilson bombs away, throwing for Hassan Jones, who almost made the catch over Jackson's shoulder. Oh, that was so close. Now you got third and 16. You still have to get a first down here, too, fellas. Here's the coverage. That's Vesty Jackson on the play. No, actually, Jackson. Right through his hands. Jackson should have had it, perhaps. Although he Hassan was Jones timed it beautifully and looked like he could have made the catch. 22 seconds to go. They need the bomb, a little dump-off pass. Unless they can run it in, we'll eat up most of the clock. Three-man rush this time. Wilson throws sideline. Gustafson, first down and out of bounds. Very nice. 16 seconds left. Very nice. 18-yard grab for Gustafson, who came into the game with no catches, has three tonight. Got time for maybe three plays without the timeout. He can work it properly. Got to work the sidelines here. So if you can get inside, get around the 20-yard line, then you can throw for the end zone. Wade Wilson in a half of football is thrown for 211 yards and three touchdowns. But it won't matter unless he can get this one. Hail Mary. And incomplete. And eight guys around the ball. Including Anthony Carter and Leo Lewis. I thought I saw Mod Rashad in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. He's just hoping for a break, you know, wall bouncing off somebody else. You, know, you see the way they shield it, though? They really keep their eye on where they are on the field. 
Kazan Jones, 84, and Dewerson playing center field. That took eight seconds off the clock, and there are eight seconds left. That's not a very happy camper right there. No. Hail Mary, this is the ball game. And batted away incomplete. That's it. The Chicago Bears, after blowing a 13-point lead, come back in the fourth quarter behind substitute quarterback Mike Tomczak and get a 35-yard touchdown pass to Dennis Gentry and the Bears for the fourth time in the decade of the 80s have won the NFC Central. And now the Vikings still need two wins in their last three games to make the playoffs in 1987. Here it is, the last play of the game. Never any question. Our thanks to Ed Marinero, our guest analyst tonight out of Cornell and the Minnesota Vikings. Ed, it was a pleasure to have you with us. Hope we'll get you back sometime. Now. I hope so. I had a great time, guys. Thanks, Eddie. Our final score here at the Metrodome, the Chicago Bears 30, the Minnesota Vikings 24. On behalf of all of our ESPN crew, Ed Marinero and Roy Firestone, this is Mike Patrick saying so long from Minnesota. Let's go to SportsCenter.